The calendar says fall has arrived, but the temperatures still remain hot, and the two teams playing tonight want to keep those temperatures rising. Can MGM catch fire and win their second game in a row, or will Davidson snap a two-game losing streak and ignite a spark for the second half of their season? We're about to find out up next. Week 7 action starts now with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Al Wheaton, along with Corey Bounty. Down on the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. Corey, let the jockeying for playoff positioning start tonight. And you're exactly right, Al, and what a great evening weather-wise here in Mobile, Alabama, for some high school football. A yeah. critical 7A Region 1 game in which, like you mentioned in your introduction, they're jockeying for playoff position. It's hard to believe that we've already gone through six weeks of high school football, but right. here it is, a critical game to determine seeding in playoffs. It is. MGM is the home team tonight. Speaking of home, it is homecoming. And coming to the game, you can see the toilet paper all through the trees in the neighborhood. Kids are excited. Parents are excited. It is definitely happening right here in the city of Sims tonight. Homecoming for MGM. Corey, what is on your checklist? MB, MGM is the home team. What's on your checklist for them tonight? It's going to be very important for the MGM Vikings to limit Davidson's explosive plays. And what does Coach consider an explosive plays? He says anything that is given up over 20 yards. Coach McCain wants to make sure that he limits those Davidson Warriors to 20 yards or less. And He's okay with a couple of explosive plays, but not too many tonight. Also, they have to have Viking valuables. What do I mean by that? The turnover situation has been critical for this MGM team. If they want to stay in this game, they must control the turnover battle and create more turnovers than they have. And the third thing, they must play with extreme energy and intensity the entire game. A couple of weeks ago, right here on this home field, they took the McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets into double overtime but weren't able to come away with that win, let it slip away. Right. So Coach McCain just emphasizes playing the entire game and not just taking a play or two off. Now across the field, the Davidson Warriors, they're the visiting team tonight on a two-game losing streak. Corey, they're trying to get some energy and get their season back going. What's on your checklist for Davidson tonight? Yeah, they want to avoid the Davidson drive killers. What Coach Smith means by that is anything that's inflicted upon themselves that hurts the Davidson Warriors, puts them in first and 15 or second and long, they want to stay away from that, jumping off sides, giving MGM valuable field position. They must also find a way to flip the field position. Special teams will be a factor for the Davidson Warriors tonight. They have what I consider to be one of the premier kickers in the state of Alabama, and they're going to utilize his special skills tonight. And they must put in warrior work at the line of scrimmage. That's how you always win football games, and you want to dominate offensively and defensively within those trenches, Al. All right, appreciate that, Corey. A lot going on with your checklist tonight. Pre-game activities just wrapping up here in Sims, home of the Vikings. Matter of fact, let's take it down to the sideline. Kimberly was down there enjoying some of it. Kim, what's going on before the game, before kickoff tonight here? There is a lot of excitement down here on these sidelines. It's a little bit quiet right now, but as you can see, these players are ready to get this game started because they feel like they've got something to prove. They want to come away with another victory, but on the other side of the field, that team to get the win tonight. So both of these teams, when I talk to both of the coaches, they are ready to fight to win this game tonight. So I think it's going to be a great game this evening, and I look forward to the competition. Appreciate that, Kimberly. Oh, yeah, right now, Corey, they're headed to the middle of the field to get the coin toss. And you know what? A lot of, a lot of excitement here at MGM Stadium. Had a chance to talk to Coach Stan McCain, and he said the way the season's going, things are looking pretty good for them. Got a big win at Citronelle last week uh, up the road for the, uh, for the Vikings. Matter of fact, let's take a look at the weather. Beautiful shot right there from the top of our camera, top of the, of the stadium here. 82 degrees. It feels great, 65% humidity. Corey, no chance of that persnickety 
pesky Thursday, rain Thursday, tonight. Zero percent chance for showers. How are you feeling about that? It's a good situation for the athletes because it's been a week in which it has not rained and they've been able to get in a rain-free week of practice. I know last week it rained almost every single day and it makes things a little bit difficult for these coaches because they have to change and move, especially when there's lightning strikes, they have to move inside to their gym facility and it's just not the same. And tonight there's five new coaches for the Davidson Warriors wow. and Coach Smith wanted me to go ahead and I want to go ahead and give these shouts out to these assistant coaches his assistant offensive line coach Rob Miller his running back quarterback coach Sean Burney his wide receivers coach James Ray his outside linebackers coach Tyler Avera and his defensive line coach Big Charlie Agee are all new coaches <laughs> wow. to this staff, and he said they've really made a difference. Kelly Eubanks will anchor the defensive side of things, calling the, as the defensive coordinator, and the offensive coordinator is Ken Boatman. So it's a different dynamic for this Davidson Warrior team, but they're excited. Their inside linebacker coach, Chris Casher, he just signed a contract to play with the Calvary Stampede in the CFL. So they had an alumnus that was helping coach out the inside linebackers, but he couldn't turn down that opportunity to go and play in Calgary and pursue his NFL dreams. Right. So it's just a brand new staff for this Davidson Warriors, and you have to be excited here in Sims, Alabama tonight. You do. Speaking of the excitement, there are the MGM Vikings running onto the field. I'm sure they want to have that, that fight song going on tonight. Roar Vikings roar as they get ready to go head to head against Davidson tonight. Had a chance to talk with Coach Smith as well. He says everything is pretty much falling into place with those addition of the coaches right there. Coach Sean Smith coming in and taking over the program. And what he said, Corey, what I liked about it, he said, you know what? Everyone is here to help us. We're here for the community. We're stepping up, and we want to do good things for the kids we have on the team. So he's trying to give off that positivity as we get close to kickoff here. MGM will be receiving the kickoff. Davidson won, so they declined to the second half. So we'll get ready to have some action headed your way here. Al Whedon, Corley Bounty down on the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn and back for the Vikings. Kickoff return. Nick Poe, Jerry and Wilson, and C.J. Wallace will set up to take this kick back coming from, as we call him, Corey, Mr. Clutch Joe Montano, an all-state kicker being featured tonight. Not very often, can we say that? Yeah, he's a young man who's a soccer player by trade, but we know we've seen him the last few years at Media Day mentioned as a specialist. And when you have that type of weapon in high school football, it makes a world of difference. Many of his kick, as a matter of fact, 50% of his kickoffs have led to touchbacks. Montano setting up right there at the 45, getting ready to kick off. There's a shot of him right there. The young man has made all state the past three years. He's a senior and has great opportunity and a great future in front of him. So we're moments away from kickoff here. Davidson and MGM going head to head. Corey, you couldn't ask for a better night here out in Sims, Alabama. I agree, Al. It's just Friday night lights. It's what it's all about, the atmosphere, the pageantry. You got to love it. There's a kick from Montano, and it's taken by one of the up guys for the Vikings, who gets up maybe to about the 18-yard line. So we'll get our first look at MGM, take a look at their starters for tonight. Coming in for tonight, MGM, that offensive line averaging 229 across the front. Be on the lookout for Jerry and Wilson and Jarius Green, receivers out there. Also, Zach Switzer at halfback. This guy has a bunch of all-purpose yards for the MGM Vikings, so make sure you keep your eye out from him. They'll be utilizing him in the slot a lot tonight, so would not be surprised if Switzer gets a lot of the calls for Mayor Montgomery. First and 10, ball on their 18-yard line. Lucas Harwell back to lead the Vikings. There he is right off the top. Just talked about him. Zach Switzer would have carried for maybe one or two yards. Here's a look at the Davidson defensive lineup. Starting at nose guard, Carnell Sexton backed up by Cedric Johnson and Eric Bell. They play a 3-4 over at Davidson. Also, keep your eyes out for James Atkins at corner and Jason Williams playing safety back there. Free safety back for the Davidson. A lot of seniors on that Davidson defensive lineup. Second and about, uh, we'll call it maybe eight yards here, Corey, for the Vikings. And Harwell back to pass already early. 
And that ball intended for Nick Poe. He's the leading receiver, incomplete. It takes MGM to third down. Good defense by James Atkins on the play. And that's all you can ask. It was a good throw. You allow your wide receiver to try to jump up and go get it. And you look at Nick Poe, listed as 5'6", 170 pounds. He's a senior. He has tremendous leaping ability. He just was not able to come away with that as, again, the Davidson Warrior defense made sure of that. So it's third and about eight here for the Vikings looking over to the sideline to get the call. Play clock under 10 seconds. Good shot of Harwell right there. Rolling out to his right, little screen, and that ball goes into the hands of a Davidson Warrior, picking that ball off for Davidson, Corey. Get a name on him Reginald right there. Reginald Davis the second. Davis the second, not on our starting lineup, but he picks off the ball at 11.07 early in the contest here. And that's a huge interception. You look at Harwell rolling out of the pocket, just throws it across his body, thought that his receiver was going to be rotating Jack, Zach Switzer out of the backfield and really did not make communication with him. An ill-advised throw leads to a Davidson Warrior turnover. Here 11.07 in the first quarter, Davidson's in great field position. Tim Johnson with the handoff there. Up the middle for a couple yards. Let's take a look at the Davidson Warriors offense led by quarterback Tim Johnson. He's a senior. Wasn't able to start the first game of the season, but he's gotten himself back together. Also back there in the backfield, Colby Blunt, Joe Montana will be the handling kicking duties for them. Also wide receivers, keep your look out for Kyle Graham and Jaden Jordan across the front. That Davidson offensive line averaging 249, Corey. So that is a big offensive line that Colby Blunt runs behind. And Colby Blunt has 767 rushing yards on the season. They're definitely going to feed him and let him use his great vision. Ball back off to Blunt again, and that's enough to pick up the first down. You can see our camera guys right on it. And that ball is taken to about the 27, maybe 28-yard line. Here's a look at the MGM defense. They play a 3-4 just like Davidson, averaging 220 across that front defensive line. Pretty good weight there. Keep your eye out for Connor Cates. Also playing defensive end tonight, number 52, Carrick Bumpers. Normally an outside linebacker, but he's got his hand in the dirt tonight, so getting it started outside linebacker. Number 16, Zach Lewis will take care of him. And Trey Umbarger, he's a junior, up and rising junior for the Vikings, playing defense. So. First down for Davidson, ball back to Blunt. He picks up maybe a couple falls down at about the 26-yard line, and Davidson getting close to the red zone early in this contest. And you look at the vision of Colby Blunt. That was a high snap right there, and Carrick Bumpers on the play was able to make the tackle for the MGM Vikings, but Blunt was able to turn pretty much nothing into a little bit of a positive gain. Situation now where it's going to bring up second down and about eight yards to go for the Warriors. Blunt can do that, Corey. He's a very creative runner. A lot of energy kind of came on the scene last year, rushed for over 1,000 yards. People say, where'd this kid come from? Out of nowhere. But he's definitely there. Johnson with the RPO keeper. And Corey's in no man's land. He tries to scrape together maybe a yard or two to take it to a third down for Davidson. Yeah, on that option, Tim Johnson, the 5'9", 153-pound senior quarterback, had the opportunity to go ahead and pitch that. As we take a look at the replay, probably would have been better off if he would have pitched it. But he cuts across the grain and picks up two or three positive yards. Going to bring up third down and five now for the Davidson Warriors from the Vikings' 19-yard line. Ball just inside the red zone, as Corey alluded to it here. So a big play right here to pick up a first down, but you know you got your, your card in your back pocket with Joe Montano, the All-State kicker. I'm pretty sure he could pop it in if they can't convert. And that ball goes out incomplete, tried to hook up with Jerquan Scott, the big tight end. So as I just alluded to, Corey, decision time for Coach Sean Smith. And that's one of the situations to where Tim Johnson would love to have that throw back. He's a young man who played the varsity quarterback position for the Warriors a year ago, and something he really wanted to work on was his accuracy and his ability to roll out of the pocket and put the ball on the money. Had his tight end open, if he would have connected there, it would have been a first down. Fourth and five, the Warriors go ahead and decide to roll the dice and go for it. All right, Coach Sean Smith says, big boy football, 7A, Region 1, we're going to go for it. Lined up in a pistol formation. Blunt back there behind Johnson. They give it to him. Might as well take a 50-50 shot with the young man, and he comes up short. So Davis is not able to capitalize with points off of that turnover. So ball over on downs, back to MGM at the 824 mark. 
turnover on downs, a big stop for the Vikings after that turnover, and it's essentially going to put them right where they were right. prior to the interception. And that's a big play and a big stand by Coach McCain, and defensive coordinator for the Vikings, John Kubik has to be very happy with this defense. I wonder about the thought pattern went into there, Corey. We know that Montana has kicked a 50-yarder this season, so that would, wouldn't would have been 50 yards, 36. but they decided to go for it. Yeah, it would have been a 36-yard field goal in that situation. And now, again, the Davidson Warrior defense is going to have to show what they're made of. They came away with that interception just moments ago, but defensive coordinator Kelly Eubanks He's excited about this young Warrior team. They're giving up 23 points per game, but he feels, and Coach Smith feels, that they have not gotten their best game yet. Right. So they're hoping tonight this proves to be their best best game thus far. So they're going to award Reggie Davis with that pickoff. He's back up on defense right now for MGM's second series. Little handoff. Looks like that ball goes to Switzer. Zach Switzer up the middle for a couple. Maybe one or two. It'll take MGM to second down. No, no, that's not Switzer. William there. Nunn. William Nunn on William the carry. Nunn on the carry. Big and, fullback there. And he does pick up a couple yards. And that's a situation running back by committee tonight. Switzer will get some touches along with William Nunn and Keyshawn Williams also for the Vikings. Second and about eight for MGM. Ball back to none again, and that goes nowhere, Corey. That's a no-gainer there. Big tackle on the play by Eric Bell, the defensive end for the Davidson Warriors. You look at him slanting down that line of scrimmage coming from his right defensive end position, has 12 tackles, make that 13 tackles on the season for Mr. Eric Bell, the senior for the Warriors. Third and long for MGM behind the sticks the second time tonight in their series. They have went to Nick Poe one time. Ball was close. It was underthrown. Let's see if they'll get back to Poe again. Poe in motion. Fakes the jet sweep. Harwell escapes. He's got some room, Corbin. Now the pocket closes on him, and that's going to take MGM to fourth down. The pursuit of the Davidson oh, Warriors dude. defense was ferocious. Jalen Harris from his down. linebacker position, the 6'1", 181-pound senior in pursuit. Harwell down. steps up into the pocket, avoids the initial rush, rusher Cedric Johnson, but then has absolutely nowhere to go. This Warrior defense proved to be too quick, and Blunt will be back deep now for the Warriors. Ethan, Dunk, Ethan Duke on to punt for MGM. Kobe Blunt setting up at his own 41-yard line for this punt here. Nice punt by Duke. Looks like we'll get a return from Blunt. He's trying to elude the MGM defenders, and he does make that turn, Corey. He's got some open field, gets up to about the 47-yard line of MGM. And Davidson will take over. Let's take a look at impact players. Who do you have for MGM tonight as your impact player score? Lucas Harwell, the quarterback. You look at him, he's a senior. He's been leading this Viking team. We saw him earlier throw that interception, but he's a young man. As the Vikings go, he goes. Right. Um, he's a great passer. Saw him a couple weeks ago throw a couple of strikes and had over 200 yards passing. Also, the wide receiver in the slot, Nicholas Poe. We saw him. Uh, Harwell attempted to throw a pass to him earlier in the game, and it was knocked away by the Warrior defender. But he's a young man that can make things happen quick, fast, in a hurry for this Viking team. All right, there, your impact players for MGM Corps. We're at 608. I know we haven't observed heat timeouts last week, but it looks as if the officials may be kind of using some discretion. So while we have a break, let's look at the impact players for Davidson right now. For the Warriors, we mentioned the kicker, Joe Montano. If Coach Smith would have elected to go for that kick, it would have been close to a 36-yarder. His longest on the season has been over 50 yards. Saw him kick that against Baker. And also Colby Blunt. Colby Blunt is the workhorse for this Warrior team. We mentioned he had over 1,000 yards rushing a year ago, is approaching that number again this year. Just a wonderful young man to be around and is the epitome of what a Warrior leader is all about. We have seen Blunt touch the ball a few times tonight, and I'm sure he will touch it more as Davidson on the move right there, first and 10. 
with that ball. Jonathan Whitfield picks up a good significant gain, maybe about six or seven yards, so maybe maybe eight, Corey. It's going to be second and short for Davidson. And Whitfield comes in, the 5'8", 175-pound sophomore with 40 rushes for 118 yards and one touchdown. Now it's going to be second down and short for Davidson, and this is where they like to operate. That big mammoth offensive line likes to get that push and just likes to let the backs bowl over them. 249 pounds is the average for the Davidson offensive line. Little fake, little pitch out. Davidson on the move there, kind of doing a little stutter step and getting around the corner. D Adrian Portlock, Corey, picks up the first down and gets further into Viking territory. And you look at Portlock, the 5'8", 178-pound junior, also has a lot of receptions, eight receptions on the season. In this situation, Johnson decided to go ahead and make the pitch, and it's going to move the chains for the Warriors that they're going to approach the Vikings' 26-yard line. Work. Davidson lined up in the pistol formation. Portlock comes to the back, and they're going to air it out. Does have a receiver in the end zone. That ball is incomplete. Tried to get it out to Dennis Hamilton, Corey, and a, a last-minute Viking came That's over to interrupt it. C.J. Wallace in coverage for the Vikings, and it was a good throw because he put it in the only place that his wide receiver could catch it in the back of the end zone as we take a look at that replay. Just a three-step drop, and he tries to dump the pigskin into the back of the end zone. Almost comes up with it, but again, in a situation to where you're at first and 10, you can take that kill shot early yeah. in the downs, especially when you have a big back like Colby Blunt who has that excellent and dynamic vision. If he gets past the line of scrimmage, he's taking it in for six. Nice look at Johnson's arm there. They hand that one off to Kobe Blunt. He's got room up the middle. Corey keeps those legs going. He's close to another first down. Let's see what they mark this at. And he is going to have enough for that first down. And it's just great strength and great vision and great push by this offensive line. He goes right behind his right guard and right tackle, Devon Sylvester and Jamal Dozier. Listed at 340 pounds is Sylvester, so you can't go wrong there. And Blunt's going to get it again and try to get in deeper into the red zone territory. Davidson playing tempo, gets that ball to within the five-yard line. They're knocking on the door, trying to put it into the end zone here in the first quarter. And you just want to keep feeding Colby Blunt right here. And if you're the defensive NGM, you don't need to get caught looking at the eye candy because you can play action pass and <laughs> score something very quickly. The Vikings are going to call a timeout to get themselves and regroup. I see Tim Johnson running to the sideline, but there also is a flag on the play as well. Looks like they're counting the players. Yep, 12 men on the field. That's what it looks like the call is going to be, Cora. Possibly. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They're going to talk about whether the timeout was called prior to the illegal participation. Right. And I think that the, as soon as the coaches realized that they had 12 prior to them breaking the huddle, they called the timeout, and that's what their discussion is right now. They want to get the right call, and I like how they're sorting this out, take the time to talk about it. You see uh, Coach Stan McCain right there near the 20-yard line. He's out there wanting to know what's going on as well. Like, hey, what's the deal? What's going on? <laughs> Take the ball down to the five-yard line. There is no flag on the play. There's no flag on the play. So head referee Tim Dees picks up the flag. That the rest of our officials, Gary Malden, John Hicks, James Delfaco, Jonathan King, Chip Mayhole, and Ladarrell Thames. They're going to honor that timeout, Corey. And uh, so on, in that instance, MGM won't be penalized. Yeah, I think that's a good – awareness by the coaching staff realizing they did not have the appropriate personnel on the field and it didn't want them to cost yards to get Davidson closer to the pylon or closer to that goal line because they're already the ball looks like it's going to be spotted right at the five yard line of the Vikings but yeah. you know in this Davidson offense situation when you're running behind that big offensive line you're not going to hesitate to give the ball to Kobe Blunt. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's what the Davidson Warriors have continued to do all That's true. season long. It's just ground and pound. That's where their strength lies. So let's see right here coming out of this timeout whether they're going to go ahead and maybe run some play action to the tight end or just go ahead and go to their strength, which is the running game of number 31 and Kobe Blunt. 
Davidson averages 17.8 points on the season on offense. And they're trying to punch this one in early here. We're sitting at the 428 mark in the first quarter. Just underway, kickoff, pretty uh, quick flowing game there. Blunt with the ball into the end zone, he goes. We haven't even had a penalty, Corey. They picked the flag up for the touchdown. Coach Sean Smith and the crew make the call. So Kobe Blunt on about, a, we'll call it with a four or five yard, five yard touchdown there. Easy, easy pickings for the Warriors. And Kobe Blunt, you look at the replay again, coming out of the timeout, you knew you wanted to go to your big bruising back and this young man, look at the cutback and the ability and the vision for him to plow those five yards. He got the great push by his offensive line and congratulations to that offensive line making it possible. That's the seventh rushing touchdown of the season for the P -A -T. Davidson Warriors, Kobe Blunt. Excuse me, Gore, PAT is no good right there, so Montana. Tano was 9 of 11 for extra points this season, but that's no good. So Davidson up 6 nothing right now. Let's take it down to the sidelines and check in with Kimberly Dunn. Yes, I'm here with Senator Rusty Glover. How are you doing this evening? Doing great, doing great. Of course, we're down 7 to nothing for homecoming, so that's not always that pleasant, but uh, <laughs> it's good, good crowd and good weather tonight. Yes, it sure is. It's finally kind of cool down here. So what has your term as senator been like? Oh, it's been great. I've represented about, I guess, about 15 high schools in my area that have students that live in my district. And each year I try to go to at least one game in the district. And, and uh, it's tough sometimes. Sometimes I have to wait till the playoffs before I can get to some of the teams. But uh, some of the teams that traditionally go to the playoffs each year, I try to make sure I see them at the end. But it's, it's been great to see everybody and see the players play. Yes. Now, what does it mean coming back to Mary Montgomery? You used to be a teacher here. Both of your children went to school here and graduated from here. So what does it mean coming back and supporting this school? Well, it's great. It's great. It's my community. Like I say, my kids went here. And, uh, you know, it's like family here. So it's always great to come back here each year. So what does the future look like for Senator Rusty Glover? Well, I have four and a half weeks of my term left, and I hope to get some sort of a job opportunities in Montgomery after this upcoming election. Looking forward to doing working for the people continuing. Yes, well, thank you so much for your service and your continued service, and I hope that you enjoy the game. Thank you, Kimberly. Right. Good to be here. Thank you, Kim. Great interview with Rusty Glover there. And on that return, William Nunn, Corey, picks up a couple yards. Going back to the extra point, seemed as if Montano kind of got, maybe caught it fat, Corey, like when I played golf, kind of chilly dipped it. As you notice, the officials under the goalposts were looking up. He got a lot of loft on it, but just didn't get the accuracy down. Yeah, that's something that doesn't happen very often, as yeah. you mentioned. And he's one of the best kickers in the state of Alabama, and I guarantee it's a situation now at 6-0. to zero. Mm. If the Warriors need two points, they won't hesitate at all to go for the two-point conversion. Even on that kickoff, had a lot of air on that one as well. So MGM back, a little high snap. But they get that ball off to William Nunn, and he picks up a couple nice run, maybe four or five yards. Way to get some positive yardage, second down for MGM coming up. And Nunn is busy tonight. He just yeah. fielded that kickoff for the Vikings, and now the 5'9", 165-pound junior is toting the pigskin for the Vikings in the backfield also. Yet to call Nick Poe's name yet, Corey, again. We only mentioned him once or twice. None with that ball again and goes up the middle, picks up the first down. Davidson gives up 23 points a game, so it's not like the defense is stingy or anything. Kind of surprised they haven't gone to Poe very much. And I'm not, you know, surprised that the Vikings have just picked up their first first down of the first quarter, but it's up for this offensive line to get that push that they need. And again, the playmaker, if you look at the bottom of the screen, is Nick Poe. One-on-one -on -one coverage, he's out on the island, is the cornerback Daniel Thompson. Yeah. Um, if he gets beat, then it's a situation to where it's showtime. Well, what they're doing, they're continuing to feed that rock to William Nunn. I think it's forward progress to give him maybe about four or five more positive yardage for the MGM Vikings. Maybe they're doing a chess match to set him up, set up the pass with the run. You look at the replay, he's making sure he secures that football, and that's Smart. one of the things that you want to see all your running backs do. It makes the running backs coach very happy because he's making sure he doesn't fumble or the Warriors rip the ball away in the hole. Handoff once again to Nunn. 
Falls over the 40-yard line, close to a first down. Once again for MGM, MGM, and it looks like he's going to have enough possibly, Corey, and the chain gain is moving, so another first down for MGM. A nice positive momentum run here for Coach Stan McCain and the Vikings. Shamar Lewis, the 5'7", 165-pound senior on the stop, but positive yards on first down. The offensive line is getting the type of push that they need. Packed house here in Viking land celebrating homecoming. They bring Switzer in and give the ball to him. He picks up maybe four or five. So the running game is working for MGM. Eric Bell on the stop for the Davidson Warriors. Again, coming from his defensive end position. But as this drive has gone, the Vikings are picking up three, four, and five yards right. on first down. Ball sitting at the 47 yard line. Close to the midfield stripe. They hand it off once again. Nice run from Nunn right there. Corey, acceleration burst through. I believe that's enough to pick up another Vikings first down. Anytime you get to the second level and your safety is having to make the tackle, right. that means the guys up front are doing their job. And so far, they're putting a hat on a hat. And the offensive coordinator for the Vikings, Grady McCluskey, has really found something within this running game right now, has really come to life on this drive. Vikings pass the midfield stripe for the first time tonight as we tick close to 90 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Nice handoff, and that's a fumble. Switzer fumbles it, and Davidson comes up with that ball. It's live, and they are bringing it back here, possibly trying to get some room around the edge on the run back there. Rashad Kaiser, Corey. And he was Johnny on the spot. Someone else had it, but it fell into his lap. One of those situations to where the Viking valuable, the turnovers, yep. is something that has really, really hurt this MGM team. If you look at the replay, it was a clean handoff, and it was a situation to where you had the running back running real, real hard, Zach Switzer. Good play of stripping it away by number 44, Jalen Harris, on the play, creating the turnover, and it took that weird bounce to where it bounced yeah. right to the Davidson Warriors. They were running to the numbers on the far sidelines, trying to create that convoy, weren't able to turn it up for six. Those jet sweep for Davidson, they are coming around the edge on the move, showing the speed, Kyle Graham. Picks up maybe four or five there, Corey. Nice jet sweep there for Davidson. And that's a big time play for the Warriors, especially capitalizing off of the turnover that just happened. The offense comes on the field very quickly, leading six to zero. All the Warriors now having the ball at their own 46 yard line. It's a situation to where this playbook becomes wide open. It's second down and five. You can take your big time strike or you can continue to give the ball to Colby Blunt. Because again, folks, if he gets the ball past the line of scrimmage, right. he makes positive things happen. Oh, a little pre-snap movement there. Let's see if this one will go against MGM or will it be false start against Davidson? I don't, I think it's gonna go in Kaysen Barton, the nose guard, 5'11", okay. 225 pound junior. Um, he, he just close on the defense. Yes. Five yard penalty. Dead ball encroachment. Be a first down. First down. So that's enough to get the first down for Davidson just with that encroachment. So it'll be first and ten. Ball sitting right there at about the 49-yard line of MGM. Al, at 225 pounds, it's kind of hard to hide that type of momentum <laughs> at the line of scrimmage. And when you make that contact, it's easy for those officials to identify you. Looks like this will be our last snap of the first quarter. Play clock and game clock within two seconds of each other, so Davidson will have to get it off. Somewhat of a delayed handoff to Blunt, but he gets up maybe five or six on that carry, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter with Davidson on top, six to nothing over MGM. Don't move. We're going to come back on the other side with more football. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week.
October is Parent and Family Engagement Month, and Mobile County Public Schools is sending out an invitation to you. Join us Monday, October 15th at your child's school, and you can pick up report cards as you meet and greet your child's teacher. There will also be parenting workshops to provide resources and materials for students' success. Because when families, communities, and schools work together, students succeed. So mark your calendar October 15th for our Parent and Family Engagement Day. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Davidson on top, six to nothing as we go into the second quarter. If you saw us at the top of the show, we got our purple polos on, courtesy of our folks over at Future Ones. Corey, tell them about Future Ones. Where the future, Gus Smith and Trent Massey, they have an opportunity to provide you with athletic apparel as well as any equipment needs that you need. Future Ones, wear the future. And we have our polos tonight on because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So we're showing our support for domestic violence. Corey, I must say you look quite dapper in Likewise, your wall looking purple tonight there. Likewise. Second down for Davidson up the middle goes Colby Blunt. Corey, he's trying to take it to the house. That's 49 yards, touchdown, first play of the second quarter, wow. And I mentioned it earlier, once this young man gets past the line of scrimmage, he's going to the house for six, and that's exactly what he found. His vision, as soon as he planted, he knew he wanted to go north and south, and the explosiveness that he has and the speed that this young man has, you can easily see why he was a 1,000-yard rusher a year ago, picks up one in bunches at 49 yards. Montano on for the extra point. And he puts this one through the upright. So Davidson extends their lead 13 to nothing over MGM. Corey, I couldn't even do my first quarter recap. And you know what? Blunt takes it to the house. So maybe we'll come back and we'll recap the first quarter. Look at Blunt move. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Mobile County Public School Signature Academies allow students and parents school choice that prepares students for a career. The academy is for students in 10th through 12th grade. Choosing a high school can be overwhelming for parents and students, which is why you should attend the Signature Academy Showcase, October 16th from 4.30 till 6.30 p.m. At the Mitchell Center, parents and students will have an opportunity to ask questions and speak to representatives from various departments and learn more about the Signature Academies. For info, go to mcpss.com. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Al Whedon, joined by Corley Bounty. On the sidelines is Kimberly Dunn. And, Corey, we took a break. It was 6-0. We came back for one play. Now it's 13-0. Wow. Took 11 seconds, and that just goes to show what Kobe Blunt can run in the 40. Man. Because he ran 49 yards quickly in 11 seconds. Didn't take long at all. Short kick right there from Montano. Looks like some, something's going on. He's hooking them tonight. That's the third return for William Nunn tonight, Corey. And I think it's very important. I think it's purposefully done. Okay. It's a sky kick because of the returners and the speed and ability that the Vikings return team and Nick Poe has. Maybe that's what it is. Let's take a look at some other action going on. Football is not the only sport happening for Mobile County Public Schools. We also have some volleyball situations going on here. Division A champion Sims Bulldogs, Division B champion Lot Wildcats. They went head to head. And your winner, the Sims Bulldogs, of Mobile County Volleyball Champions. We're in their backyard right here, Corey, so folks excited about the young ladies winning that volleyball championship. And I want to say I saw them earlier this evening yep. in their volleyball uniforms coming out here as champions in Sims. I saw them as well, so congratulations to the Sims Bulldogs winning that volleyball championship. So, Corey, I, I think I can do it now. First quarter recap, Davidson had two fumbles. I mean, they picked up two fumbles from MGM, five-yard touchdown run by Colby Blunt, and since then, as you said, he's put one in the end zone, 49 yards, wow, and Davidson up 
13 to 0 in the second quarter. And it's going to be critical for this MGM offense to get a sustained drive without turning the football over. We saw them move the chains on four consecutive plays. Yeah. But again, it's just valuing the football. That's going to be the key here for the Vikings for the duration of the game. Just saw James Atkins all over Nick Poe running down the sideline, not letting him get out of sight. We've yet to see them go back to Poe during the contest here. It's pretty much been run, run, run. Third and about five. So third and five right now as the PA announcer calls it here at SS Grider Memorial Field here in MGM. Harwell looking to the sideline. Play clock under 10 seconds. He needs to get this off pretty quick here. Harwell back to throw. Throws it back to Zach Switzer. A little delayed screen. Switzer up the middle past the midfield stripe. I see no flags on the play court. Is that a fumble? I see no, the ball came out. Down. He's down by contact, but also down. Switzer is down as well. And that was a good design play. It's yeah. a situation earlier that the Vikings were looking to for Harwell to throw the ball back. And that's just, if that's an injury to Zach Switzer that allows him not to come back in this game, that's an offensive weapon that's yeah. gone. Good job of catching the football and knowing exactly what to do with it. He's a halfback, and it looks like he just got hit in that knee. As soon as he did hit the ground, right. he immediately let go of the football, letting you know that he is in agony and pain in that knee situation. So while they take a look at Switzer right there, I want to let you know coming up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it is fall break. No school for students October 8th, 9th, and 10th. So it's a teacher work day and professional development days coming up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the fall break. And, Corey, I was reminded of that by my twins this morning as I dropped them off at school. As they said, Daddy, there's no school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I said, oh, so you know. They said, yes. We're letting you know. They're so. very happy for the extended weekend. Coming oh, yeah. off that Saturday and Sunday, they're going to get the five-day weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, want to let you, let you know about that. Also, parents, it's time to get connected with Parent Connect. Make sure you join Carmen Bounds and Paula Reese as they look into district-wide policies that concern your child's and their school. You can catch them weekly right here on the MCPSS TV network, plus live here tonight at halftime. We will have... Paula Reese stopping by to talk more about what parents can pick up through the school system and more about Parent Connect. And glad to see Zach Switzer going off on his own strength there, Corey, hop, hopping over to the sideline. So good look right there. Also at halftime, the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. We're bringing it out here to Sims. We're going to play it as well. Kimberly will go up into the stands and get a spectator, try to get them taken care of with a Chick-fil-A prize pack if they can answer their trivia question correctly. So at halftime, the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge will be headed your way. And as we're waiting, here are some other scores that are going on. Baker leads Fairhope in the first quarter, 12-7. McGill Tulin over Foley, 22-0. Blunt leading Alma Bryant, 12-0. And Spanish Fort leading St. Paul, 7-0. A lot of early scores coming in here. Very surprised at that Baker Fairhope score there, Corey. Little jet sweep action for MGM. And that's headed to the first down marker, but cannot get it. Jerry and Wilson comes over, but he Jerry gets him maybe about three or four on the carry. Jerry and Wilson, the 5'11", 153-pound senior with positive yards on that carry. And again, that's a big time play for the Vikings trying to pick it up for their injured teammate, Zach Switzer, who went off the We're field. And and it's going to bring up second and three for the Vikings. I see Switzer on the sideline there. Trainers checking him out. He is able to still put some weight on that knee, so they're going to take a look at him. But they are more backers in for MGM to take up the load. Right there taking a the load, William Nunn, and taking a hit from Davis and pushing him back for a loss. It'll be third and long here for the Vikings. Stop for Big stop by Cedric Johnson, the defensive end, 5'10", 192-pound junior, making sure that no additional yards were gained. As a matter of fact, third and four now for the Vikings from the Warriors 41, and there's going to be a timeout call. So appreciate the correction there, Corey. No gain on the play. Coach Stan McCain wants to discuss this one right now and out on the field. Coach Sean Smith talking to Tim Dees about some action things. Action so while we have a break, let's take a look at both of these coaches. Coach's comparison, Sean Smith in his first year over at Davidson, former track coach, former basketball coach. Corey says he's been 
driving the bus for a football team since 2002, and he likes to run in 5K and 10K races. So very versatile young man. Across the field from him, Stan McCain, his first year at Mary Montgomery, started off pretty good here, three and three. Now he's retired from Mississippi. Look at his record, 111 and 75. So this man's got some experience. He was a state runner-up in 2004, back there with West Lauderdale. He likes to hunt. Said if he wasn't coaching, he'd be a grass cutter. Winning 111 games, that gives you experience with grass cutting. So uh, let's take it down the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn's got an update for us. Yes, yeah, so they, like you said earlier, they are still working on that number 15, who is Switzer. He um, is trying to, with all his might, get as much willpower, willpower so that he can get back out on the field, but they're still trying to stretch him out. He's still in a lot of pain, so hopefully we will see him later in the game tonight. All right, Kimberly, appreciate that. Third and four here for the Vikings. Big, big first down here. They want to keep this momentum going, especially with Switzer going to the sideline. It's homecoming. I know he wants to get back out here, Corey, but we'll find out. Flag on the play may have some pre-snap movement here. And that's a situation that you can ill afford on third down and four yards to go mm. to push yourself backwards and make it third down and nine because it totally changes offensive coordinator Grady McCluskey's call. <laughs> James. Oh, I'm sure that's got to irritate the coaches coming off a Dead timeout. Ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, replay third down. What To get your false start out of a timeout, Corey, and, and you're going backwards, you're shooting yourself in the foot immediately. And that's something trailing 13 to zero that the Vikings, again, just don't want to happen. Also, I'm looking on the Vikings sidelines, and it looks like starting linebacker Zach Lewis, the 5'11", 143 pounds, has ice on his ankle, number 16 for the Vikings also. Third and long here for MGM, and Harwell under attack. He escapes, still escaping, and runs into some Warriors eventually. At about the 47, he's getting up gingerly there. That's a loss. That play goes nowhere, so it'll be fourth down for MGM. And he did a wonderful job, Harwell, that is, of finding a way to break away from that initial contact. You look at him, as soon as he turns around, he almost eats the ball, finds a way to keep his balance, spins off, and as soon as he spins off, takes a vicious hit by Carnell Sexton, mm. the nose guard, 600. I mean, six foot, 300 pounds, <laughs> Al. If he was 600 pounds, Harwell definitely wouldn't have got up. Yeah, there's a look at Switzer. There. They've got the air cast on the knee there, so it doesn't look like he'll be returning tonight as he takes the crutches and heads possibly to the field house there. Ethan Duke back to punt for MGM, his second punt tonight. Stoppage in play looks like possibly a timeout called once again from MGM. So while we have a break, yeah, we'll take a look at some of the scores from last week's action. Viger over Murphy, 21 to seven. I believe that was a Thursday game. Williamson over Rain. We had that at last last week. At Lad Stadium last week, 33 to seven. Court, that score was 7-0 at halftime. And it ends up being 33 to seven. Williamson just with 33 wow. unanswered. Yeah, Sarah Land all over the floor, 42 to nothing. Ufala. Beats Bryant. Bryant traveled up the road and took the loss there, 29-7. Baker over Jackson, that was a surprise to a lot of people. 17-7, a big win for the Hornets. Heard they took a busload of folk up 43 to support the Hornets. And the win last week from MGM over Citronelle, even though that's a 7-A, 5-A battle, Citronelle was undefeated. That was their first loss last week, losing to the Vikings, 27 to 19. And you talked about the bus load and the bus load of people. Speaking of bus load of players, you mentioned Sean Smith, the head coach of the Davidson Warriors. He drives bus number one for the <laughs> Davidson Warriors, and they have all three coaches, wow. all three buses are driven by the coaches That's on staff. That's dedication. So that is dedication by the assistant coaches. All right, so Duke is setting up now to punt it. Colby Blunt setting up at the 15-yard line to receive this punt. And it's a fake. The fake is on. The pass is complete. So MGM with the fake, but there's flags on the play. Let's see if it'll stand. 
Little quick pass out to Chase LaFoe from Ethan Duke. Duke has played quarterback a few years ago, so he's experienced with throwing the ball. Let's see if this is one of those maybe motions or how they line up. I think or, it's an illegal formation. Yeah, one of in those a situation calls. to where somebody was not off of the line of scrimmage, and now all of the officials are huddling to talk about it. So yeah. you know they want to make sure that they get it right because it's a wonderful trick play that's being called by the Vikings. But if they don't get it, the Warriors will be able to decline it and take over on down. So mm. let's see exactly what our white hat, Mr. Tim Dees, comes away with. So it will go against MGM as he's coming over to the sidelines. And Sam McCain wants an explanation, and he wants it now because he took the time out to set that play up, Corey. And it was a great play call by Stan McCain, and he's explaining to Tim Dees how the formation went and how he saw it in his eyes. But at the end of the day, all that matters is that the Stripes saw it a different way. That's and right. therefore, the yellow flag comes out. And then they'll have an opportunity to go back on film and exactly to zoom in and take a look at it. But right now, he just wants an explanation as to what the officials did see. And because of it, you see that yellow rag right there on about the 43-yard line closest to Davidson sidelines, and we'll have a replay set up right here. Uh, maybe a possibly an illegal motion right. as well, but again. Because as William Nunn was in motion, the ball was snapped. Uh, so we'll see what the call exactly is. You can see the disbelief on Stan McCain's face right there. He said, I cannot believe it. Because it was, a, again, a great design play it coming was. out of the timeout. Doesn't necessarily agree with the call. You can definitely tell he doesn't agree with the call, but I think it's going to be a turnover on downs. Now the officials are going to see where exactly they want to spot the football right, right. after the penalty was called. Because look at the yardage that Davidson will pick up on because the ball was at the 47-yard line. So you can see none run across there. And the flag was thrown immediately right. as he went into motion as the ball was snapped. So we'll get the explanation here. Illegal touching. So lost it down. So a legal touching, Corey. So that makes a loss of down as well. It was fourth down, so let's keep that in mind. And if you go and look at the replay, the illegal touching had to occur by someone who was not deemed eligible right. as a wide receiver because it went from punter to the receiver, and those are the only two people who touched the football, and McC Coach McCain is again pleading his case as to see exactly. Unless he's saying the center wasn't allowed to do that particular snap, because those are only three people who may have touched the ball, the center, the punter, and then Chase LaFoe, who captured the pass there. So quite an interesting explanation. Maybe we can get further at halftime if Kimberly Dunn is able to talk to one of the officials or possibly Coach Stan McCain, because he is pretty hot right now, Corey. He he called the timeout. They designed a very, very good play. It seemed as if it was executed to the fullest as well. But illegal touching is the call. In high school football, they don't give out numbers as to who is the guilty party. They don't have. So do with the benefit of our replay, again, you mentioned it, only three people touched the football. The center who snapped the football, the punter, and then the young man who received the football. So they're the only three people who touched the football. You're not going to call illegal touching on the center. But as we take a look at the replay one more time, the punter has the football, throws a great pass. Yeah, to chase LaFoe there, so he hauls it in. Let's take it on the sideline. Kimberly has an injury update for us, Cora. What you got, Kim? Yes, I was able to speak to both of our injuries, number 16, Lewis, and Switzer, number 15. Both of them are hopeful that they will be able to play after halftime, but as for the rest of this quarter, they will not be seen. So hopefully they will both be able to come in during third quarter. All right, Kim, we appreciate that, that update. So. Coach McCain giving uh, referee Tim, De Tim Dees an earful there, and Dees will head over to the other sideline and explain to Coach Smith, I think he's giving them what, what his options are right now. And Coach McCain is still going to remain heated yeah, he's on hot. that call because, again, 
He's going to get the explanation that he wants. Illegal touching. Illegal touching. The center lined up in an illegal formation, an illegal position, and then they shifted to make him eligible, and that is not something you can do. That's against the rules. It's against this team. It's also a loss of down, so it's first down Davidson. So, Corey, it is immediately Davidson's ball right at their own 47-yard line. Great explanation from referee Tim D. And that's exactly what you want. He was explaining it to Coach McCain, and he gave Coach McCain his explanation, then went over to the far sidelines and asked Coach Smith how he wanted to take the penalty. Now it will be first and 10 Warriors from the Vikings 47-yard line. So I'm sure we all learned a valuable lesson right there. Corey, when you get your trick plays together, make sure you have your formation, everyone lined up. Great explanation from the officials there. We see some flags on the play there, counting players. I wonder if this will be an illegal participation. We saw one earlier, but they did pick the flag up. Dead ball, illegal substitution on the defense. And there is the one of the Vikings coming off the field but I believe they probably needed him off one play earlier, so that's a free five for Davidson, so it's first and five past the midfield strike. And again, if Colby Blunt gets beyond this line of scrimmage, when he does get the football, good things are going to happen, and he's not in the game right now. Whitfield has a lot of speed right. for the Warriors also. Whitfield with a first down up to about the 36, I'm sorry, 33-yard line. Let's take a look at some other football action taking place in Mobile County. The middle school players are going at it, Corey. It's playoff time. So Monday, October 15th, Hankins and Denton will have a playoff over at Hankins Middle School. And also Scarborough and Causey will play up at Blunt Monday, October 15th at 4.30. They've yet to determine the date of the actual championship game. So those four are going to will it down if you want to call it the final four here at Mobile County Middle School football action. First down for Davidson. Tim Johnson unloads that one, and that is way short. Way short tried to get it out to pork lot, and I think he would have got wrapped up immediately. So, Corey, not saying it was a smart drop, but I think he would have taken a loss if he'd even caught that ball. Yeah, it's a situation, again, that your quarterback, Tim Johnson, you look at the replay, scrambles out of the pocket and just kind of short chains it a little bit, not yeah. allowing Portlock to get his hands up under it. And again, Al, you said it exactly. If he would have caught the football and turned around, he would have been dropped immediately. So sometimes it's a bonus Be behind the line of scrimmage if Portlock would have caught that football. So now it brings up second and 10 for the Warriors. Whitfield in the pistol formation here along with Johnson. They decide to go back to Whitfield, and he's met by two or three oh, MGM oh, Vikings oh, and upended for a loss. He may get some forward progress. Wow, what a tackle by the Vikings. Big stick by Seth Dunn, the 5'9", 162-pound junior, in on the stop. And you look at this replay to where Whitfield is just mm. upended, picked up, and that's how you kill a horse. You take his feet right out from under him, and he can't gain any more yards. Third down and 10 yards to go now for the Davidson Warriors. So no gain for Whitfield right there. Blunt has not been in on this series. Maybe they're giving him an extended break, up 13-0 with 6.22 remaining here in the first half. Johnson looking to get that ball over the middle to the tight end and incomplete just out of the outstretched arms of cornerback, I'm sorry, strong safety, C.J. Wallace. He tried to get him a pick there, Corey, but couldn't bring it in. And that's exactly where the Davidson Warriors must improve on offense is completing those passes. Tim Johnson just almost throws the interception in that situation. Luckily, it was not intercepted gives the Warriors an opportunity now to pin the Vikings deep in their own territory. Joe Montano coming up, we've seen him pooch kick or sky kick the right. kickoffs. Let's see if he's able to angle this punt in favor of the Warriors. Vikings not putting anyone back, so let's see if they bring the house. No one's back to receive. Looks like a timeout has been called. Davison takes a timeout with two seconds remaining on the play clock. Maybe Sean Smith saw something, wants to get some things together. Scores coming in, scrolling across there. As you see, no score yet for Robertsdale and Rain. So 6-14 remaining here in the second quarter, Corey, as we get ready to head toward halftime here momentarily. Interesting second quarter. We had that penalty on MGM. A great, great play with the fake punt, but deemed illegal. 
by the officials. Yeah, it's a situation that because of the illegal touching, Coach McCain's going to be fuming about that for a little while. Yeah. But you have to put that behind you. You're trailing now 13-0. to zero. Colby Blunt busts the big one for 49 yards to begin the second quarter. The two turnovers against the Vikings in the first quarter were very costly also. So they'll have an opportunity to assess that situation. But here before the half, it's going to be critical that the Vikings put together something offensively. You're right about that. So we'll head back down to the field. Action ready here. No one back for MGM to receive this punt. So they're banking that Montano is going to knock it into the end zone for a touchback. But we know this young man can place the ball wherever he wants to. He plays soccer full time. And I believe we have a flag on the play. Yes, that's right. So we'll see what the call is going to be here. A little bit of flinching by the Warrior <laughs> offensive Dead line. Ball. Yeah. Ball start. Offense. So that's what it is. It'll move Davidson back five, five yard yards. Replay fourth down. Before a guy like Montano, Eight that just gives him more opportunity to probably do some more action. MGM still not putting a returner back. C.J. Wallace is the closest man back to fielding this punt if he decides to go back and play center field. Here's a kick from Montano. And great placement, looks at about the two or the three yard line. Great punt by the young man, Corey. So he pins MGM back against their own end zone and that's called flipping the field. That's exactly what he's able to do, Al. I mean, we were shocked when he missed the extra point oh, yeah. earlier shocked. to begin the game, but his kickoffs have been angled. You asked earlier why he's not striking the ball because, again, they feel that he's better at the pooch Bobby punts or the sky the kicks, and he can has the type of mastery with the football to be able to do that. Now the Vikings take over deep in their own territory with 6 3 remaining here in the second quarter. We saw them put together a couple first downs earlier in the, in the half. So it looks like we are taking the heat timeout. Official Tim Dees, he's laying the law down tonight. It's pretty warm. We'll be back with more hot action ahead of your way. Watch the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I believe my child's school is um, probably one of the best ones I could have picked in Mobile. She's in the PACE program. The teachers are phenomenal. The principal uh, couldn't ask for a better principal. The research that I had done myself, I believe the quality of education in Mobile County Public School System is excellent. For me and my child, I'm going to stick with the public school system. I think it's the way to go. Of the week. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corey Bounty. We have Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines. And Corey, as I alluded to in the open, the temperatures remain hot. Last week we had no heat timeouts, but it looks like the officials are going to kind of use discretion on the better side and we call some heat timeouts tonight. And it's a timeout that's well advised for these players and their safety because, again, the humidity has been tremendous. That looks like it's going to be a safety. Speaking Talking about of safety. safety. Speaking of safety, that looks like that's going to be a safety. Keyshawn Williams, his first carry tonight goes nowhere, and he remains in the end zone, and Davidson picks up those two points that they missed. Well, sorry, they didn't go for a try on the last touchdown. They just got a free two right here. It's a plus one in that situation wow. because you look at the replay, the penetration by the defensive line. It wasn't a clean handoff. He bobbles it, and because he bobbles it, the Davidson Warriors defenders, Alex Dials, is able to dial in and is able to punch that clock and get the stop in the end zone for the safety, 15 to zero. Our new score with 5.57 here remaining in the second quarter. The free kick coming up by the Vikings. The Warriors will have an opportunity for a great return field position wise right. because the free kick is from the 20 yard line. You don't want to give the ball back to the Davidson Warriors and Colby Blunt with 557 because, again, they love to ground and pound. The Viking defense has been out on the field for a long time here in the second quarter. Really has. Our first time calling Keyshawn Williams' name, and unfortunately, it ends up in the safety for the young man. So Davidson picks the, takes those two points right there, and they'll get the free kick here. Ethan Duke about to handle the duties. Gets a very nice punt off. 
Ball bobbled by the Warriors. But Johnny on the spot, Kobe Blunt takes care of it. Kyle Graham had it fall right through his hands, but that's the experience of the senior running back core right there to back him up. Jerry and Wilson with the huge stick for the Vikings, and as soon as Blunt took three steps, special teams did its job. Jerry and Wilson doing an outstanding job. The 5'11", 153-pound senior with the stop. Now the Warriors are at their own 35-yard line with 5.53 here to go in the second quarter. Ball sitting squarely at the 35-yard line of Davidson. And I'm sure Coach Sean Smith and the crew want to expand on this lead some more. There's the workhorse, Colby Blunt. Johnson decides to keep it and gets no game. And it's going to be imperative that the Vikings find a way to get a stop here on this series and force the Warriors into a punting situation. Right. A one-yard loss on that play, but again, on second, third, and possibly even fourth and short, I'm giving the ball to Colby Blunt, seeing if I can get the type of push that I need because, again, as soon as Colby Blunt gets past the line of scrimmage, he knows how to finish a run. Kimberly Dunn talked about Zach Lewis, the linebacker, trying to get back in the third quarter. I see him on the sideline doing sprints here right in front of us. Blunt sprints up the middle for about two or three. Pushes Davis in the third down, so it'll be third and long for the Warriors. Paul Lewis on the stop, the 6'1", 190-pound senior on the tackle. Had 31 solo tackles so far this season and one sack. And it's going to bring up third down and a long six yards to go with 445 remaining here in the second quarter. Tim Johnson brings the Warriors to the line. Play clock under 10. Colby Blunt in motion. They're going to screen that ball out to him, and he's got a lot of room, needs a couple blockers, and he heads out of bounds at maybe out of bounds at maybe about the 36, 37-yard line. That's a first down plus more. Speaking of plus, coming up at the halftime, we have bands. We'll have interviews with Paula Reese plus some Chick-fil-A. Halftime Trivia Challenge. Kimberly Dunn is going to try to give away some chicken tonight, Corey. So get a spectator out of the stands and ask them a trivia question. Hopefully they'll get it correctly and pick up a Chick-fil-A prize pack. So that plus more coming up at halftime is your Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. 425 remains here in the first half. That first down by Blunt, a big, big play to get them out of the hole. It was third and six. Flag on the play. Possibly some motion before that snap. We're going to get the call here from Tim Dees in a second. So that'll go against Ball Davidson. Leading on the stop, number one, Paul Lewis. And we have a flag on the ground. Going to back up the Warriors on this play. Illegal procedure, two men moving against the offense. Replay the down, first down, five-yard penalty. Backs the ball up to the 46 of Mary Montgomery, first and 15. So that'll back up the Warriors there, five yards, and we'll – Get first down again, just to be first and 15 this time, Corey. Situation with 417 in the second quarter, losing those five yards. You give the ball right back to Whitfield here, having Colby Blunt get an opportunity to catch a little breather after he had a run and a swing pass. Right. You want to get back to the original line of scrimmage here. Only one long pass really attempted by Johnson tonight. Threw one in the end zone to Hamilton. It was incomplete. Most of the passes have been little short screens, little dink and dunks. Tried to go across the middle to tight end a couple times. They couldn't just bring it in, but nothing deep for the Warriors. And that play gets a couple for Davidson. Not back to the original line of scrimmage, so we'll call this one second at about 13. And in this situation for the Warriors, they're content to run clock. Yeah. Because yeah. they have a couple of timeouts in their pocket that they're not going to spend. They want Vikings to use them all. Speaking of running, Corey, I know we had to make the run over to Jersey Mike Subs and pick those up for the crew tonight, and they were uh, looking so good. I saw you kind of uh, enjoying yourself when I got here to the stadium tonight, That's Corey. That's right. Mark and Christina <laughs> Sinclair have three locations, one in Malbus, one soon to come in Sarah Land, one on Airport Boulevard, and one on Dolphin Street. All right, Portlock with a little jet sweep action, and that is swept up by the Vikings. No gain on that play. So it takes Davis in the third down 
But as you just mentioned, Corey, no big rush for the Warriors, up 15 points. They can let the clock tick. They're kind of just sitting in no man's land, just wasting time here, basically. And they'll be content right here yeah. to try to diagonally pump the football if they're not able to pick up this first down on third down and 14 yards to go because we saw Montano pin them deep, and because he was able to pin them deep, they got a safety out of it. Yeah. So, again, the Vikings' friend is not the clock at this point in time. Beautiful punt by Montano there that you just talked about. Play clock down to three seconds. Johnson looking to air it out, pumps it, and that ball is complete to Dennis Hamilton. Up the middle he goes, and that's a touchdown. I see a late flag coming in, and Tim Dees has already motioned it's against Davidson, so that one coming back, Corey, wow. And that's going to be costly because mm. Tim Johnson was so excited looking for his First thrown touchdown of the season. You're right. It was 17 to 45 for 163 yards, but it is going to come back. And where he was thrown, it was right in the area of holding. And you go back and you look at this situation after the pump fake, it either has to be hands to the face. During the play, holding on the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty. Wow. Replay third down. Replay yep. third down. Probably that pump fake, Corey, and the yes. lineman got caught there holding. 45 yard touchdown negated for the holding call. Man, Hamilton took that one to the house. You're right. We looked at some numbers coming into this ball game. And Corey actually called you. I said, I can't believe it. Johnson doesn't have a passing touchdown. You said, that's right, Al. The stats don't lie. He has not thrown a touchdown this season. And that would have been huge for Dennis Hamilton also. The 5'8", 156-pound junior wanted to taste that end zone mm. for his first time. And now you're looking at a situation to where it's third and 26 yards to go. So Davidson looking at this one out, going back to Hamilton, and that's complete, Corey. Look at that, back to back. It's a touchdown for Davidson. Oh, my goodness. What a play. Tim Johnson goes back to Dennis Hamilton. And I don't see any flags on the play this time, Corey. It looks like that one is going to stand. Well, I think that's deja vu because yeah. offensive coordinator Ken Boatman dialed up the same exact play without the pump fake, and it was just a matter of Dennis Hamilton saying, look, coach, I smelled the zone a play before. They called it back. Not this time. Tim Johnson was not going to be denied. Neither was wide receiver Dennis Hamilton. That's a huge pickup and a huge touchdown by the Davidson Warriors, now leading 22 to zero. Great play from Johnson to Hamilton there, and they are extending the lead over MGM. Al, so much for down and distance in that situation. Because of that down and distance situation, the Warriors were able to overcome it, yeah. overcome the penalty, and get another touchdown. Greer's Apples for the students. Greer's Market is once again teaming up with Mobile County Public Schools for the 10th annual Apples for the Students program. Unlike traditional fundraisers, Apples for the Students is easy and fun. Best of all, everyone in the community can take part. It's simple. You shop, save your receipts, and turn them in at school, and the school can earn valuable items like computers and school supplies. So shop Greer's Markets for the Apples for the Students program program. Corey, what would you say? That was about 50, 56, yards. 56 yard touchdown pass for Tim Johnson to Dennis Hamilton. His first touchdown pass of the season. And again, that type of momentum, that type of encouragement that you have by them young, those two young men, tremendous. What it will do going into half from a confidence standpoint because Kobe Blunt didn't have to take a lot of abuse to end the half on that. You just had a quick toss and a score. 207 remaining here in the second quarter. The Warriors, when they strike, they're striking fast. So the Vikings, their backs are switching out. But once again, the punt kind of putting a little draw on it. Joe Montano sends it over to William Nunn. I think this is smart for Davidson because Nick Poe ran back one against Fairhope for a touchdown, Corey, and they want to keep the ball out of his hand. Without question, and that's the smartest thing that the coaching staff could do when they saw it on film and saw the speed of Nick Poe. You yeah. can't allow him to even touch the football, and the Vikings are struggling right now, finding ways. We saw Lucas Harwell go to him early on the first possession of the game, and he hasn't had an opportunity to touch the ball since, and because 
because of it. The Davidson Warriors lead 22-0 to zero because they're doing a good job of negating the biggest play callers or the biggest playmakers for this Viking offense. All right, Coach. I'm sorry, Co Corey, I'm about to call you, Coach. If you're Coach Stan McCain, two minutes left, you're down 22 points. What are you talking to your offense about you right now? You don't want to turn the ball over. That's the biggest thing. You can ill afford to turn the football over here with 154 because you can pump the ball back to the Davidson Warriors and trust that your defense will do what it needs to do. If you look at this replay, Lucas Harwell throwing off of his back foot. Yeah. That's never a good thing. Trying to get the football to the big playmaker, Nick Poe, trying to find a way. That's his second touch or second opportunity That's for right. a touch. But Harwell didn't have the ability to step up in the pocket and put that on the money like he would have liked to. So clock does stop. Minute 53 remaining here in the first half. They're going to hand that one off. Looks like it's to Williams, Kishon Williams. So it'll take MGM to third down. This will be third and long here for the Vikings. Not very much out of this possession so far. Alex Downs, the 5'10", 220-pound junior, again, in on the play. And there's going to be a timeout called by the Warriors because they're trying to get this football back oh, yeah. one more time. At third down and 11 yards to go, the Vikings are really struggling and sputtering on offense. Take a look at the 7A standings we have here in our area. 7A Region 1 on top right now. Theodore undefeated, backed up by McGill. So big game tonight, as you can see, Davidson 2-2 two and two in the region and MGM 1-3. and three. Coach Sean Smith told me, he said, hey, you know, we kind of control our own fate here. We don't want to drop one tonight, but it's very important that we get the win. So as you can see, things pretty tight here in 7A Region 1. A win by Theodore McGill tonight only distances distances them from other teams in the region. If we got time, we can try to get to 6A Region 1 standings up. We know the big game tonight is Sarah Land and St. Paul's. I'm sorry, Spanish Fort and St. Paul's big game for them tonight. Sarah Land undefeated, 4-0 in the region. Three teams undefeated right there. Blunt, 3-1 and one in region play. So they have a big game tonight as well. Actually, they're playing Bryant, I believe. So Daphne, Baldwin County, Robertsdale, not quite out of it yet. But we know there's some action there in 6A Region 1. And 5A Region 1, we'll get that one up. Viga undefeated. They're playing LaFour tonight over at Pritchard Stadium. Citronelle did take a loss to MGM last week, Corey, but they're undefeated in the region. They're playing Satsuma, so that's a big game tonight for the Wildcats up there in Citronelle. Yeah, you're jockeying again for position. The first and second place teams at the end of the regular season yeah. will get those home playoff games. Third and fourth places have to travel. All right, so maybe after this play, we'll try to take a look at 4A Region 1. Third and long here for the Vikings. After that timeout from Davidson, 133 remains. Little quick handoff to Nick Poe in a jet sweep. That's a fumble, Corey. You just talked about it. MGM doesn't want to give the ball over. Fortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucas Harwell falls on the biscuit as it lays on the field right there. So it'll be fourth and long, and we know what's going to happen for MGM. Let's get the 4A Region 1 standings up right quick as... They'll get it over to fourth down. Hillcrest and UMS Wright. That's a big game tonight being played. Both of those teams undefeated. And I believe Williamson is playing and Delusia, Corey. So that's a big one as well. Williamson sitting right there in fifth place, tied with Escambia County at 2-1 and one on the season. Yeah, it was 6-3 to three earlier when I checked on the score. But MGM just avoided a, a, a catastrophic meltdown yeah. by not turning that football over here. Looks like Davidson's going to get an opportunity for a return. If there's a good snap, they're trying to hold it as long as they can. But Davidson's Colby Blunt is back deep. And if you kick to him and give him an opportunity to return it, he's going to make something positive happen. That's smart for Colby Very to get smart. away from it. Doesn't take a lick to his body. The ball's going to be down probably right at the 38-yard line of the Warriors and leading 22-0 to zero right here to end mm. the second quarter. That's big time. You saw that right in your living room right there. The, the handoff to Nick Poe wasn't brought in. Just before Poe attempted to get the ball, Corey, you can see his eyes looking up. So maybe he was trying to connect with Harwell, but his eyes went up as the ball was being snapped. Not a good delivery right there. But you're right, catastrophic. Oh, yeah, it would have been. Disaster could have yeah. taken place if Davidson would have picked that ball up and pranced into the end zone. Shamar Lewis, when that – Pigskin was bouncing around this grass field, was not able to scoop and score. We've seen Davidson early in the year have a scoop and score, but all they needed to do was pounce on that football, and they would have been in prime real estate, but now they take over again at their own 38. 
28 seconds remain here in the half. Davidson airing it out. That ball incomplete. It'll take them to second down with 22.6 remaining, as you can see right there on your screen. Intended for Colby Blunt, and that's interesting that you bring him yeah. out of the backfield and line him up as a wide receiver because Colby Blunt has had one reception tonight on that little swing out pass that the Warriors ran for him earlier in that time. They send him vertically down the field, and we just saw Dennis Hamilton get his first touchdown of the season. It's going to be interesting now to see if the Warriors go to Jaden Jordan or they decide to run the clock out. Flag on the play there. It's a white. It's a white. Looks like it's going to be going against Davis. Dead ball, false start. Offense, five-yard penalty, replay second down. So a false start against Davidson. That'll push them back four yards. I'm sorry, five yards, and we'll get a do over there on second down. I think the Warriors will be content to take this 22-0 lead into halftime. Sean Smith doesn't need to take a chance to turn the ball over themselves and get a scoop and score by the Vikings. And he is. He's going to get in that victory formation and just take a knee here to end the second quarter. And that looks like that's probably going to do it. Our last play of the second quarter. So Tim D's and the crew, they're going to call it right there. So we're headed to halftime. Davidson up 22 to nothing over MGM. Two touchdowns from Kobe Blunt. He says his favorite player is Saquon Barkley. And, Corey, he has done the best Saquon Barkley impersonation tonight that he could do. He hit the hole with a lot of speed on that 49-yard touchdown run. And turnovers have been the story of the first half right. that have haunted the Vikings because it's led to points for the Davidson Warriors. And again, you cannot turn the football over this late in the season. And that's been something that Coach McCain really preached on. And it's something that I had on my checklist that they had to have the Viking valuables. They had to take care of the pigskin. And because they've not been able to do so, it's led to points for the Davidson Warriors. Right. It wasn't a fumble, but it was a punt by Joe Montano that pinned MGM back at the two yard line. And what do you know? The next play, Alex Dow bounces on the ball as Keyshawn Williams fumbles it in the end zone for a safety. So that's almost like a turnover right there, even though Davison has two turnovers tonight. Yeah, uncharacteristically, you had Joe Montana to miss a point after, but the Davidson Warriors were able to make that up with yeah. the safety that they got that made them lead 15-0, to and then they turn around and punch one in with the long touchdown pass. Tim Johnson, you have to be happy for that young man here oh, yeah. in the first quarter, and or excuse me, the second quarter, because that's his first touchdown pass of the season. All right, let's take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn has Davidson head coach Sean Smith. Coach Smith, how do you feel about your team's performance so far tonight? Um, pretty good half of football, two pretty good quarters, but, you know, we still we hadn't played four yet in, in, in one game. Yes. Four consecutive good quarters, so, you know, that'll be what we talk about at the half. Yeah, so is there anything your team needs to improve on when they come back from this uh, half? Um, a, Still avoiding negative plays, and, and we had a couple penalties there that, that put us behind the chains. You know, you know, first and long is not a good down for anybody, so we got to try and avoid that. Yeah. So to end on a positive note, what does your team need to continue to do to secure tonight's win? Keep playing hard. Keep yeah. playing hard. I think we're playing hard on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, the defense really gave us a spark um, a couple of different times. So if we can keep doing that, maybe we'll be okay. All right. Thank you so much, right. Coach. Thank you. All right. All right, Kimberly, we appreciate that. Down there with Sean Smith, head coach of Davidson. And pretty much he said very well, we got to play smart, especially on first down as well. Yeah, that's going to be critical for Davidson to focus in on at halftime. Don't want to get caught looking at the scoreboard. A lot of football left to be played, 24 minutes as a matter of fact. And yeah. that's plenty of time for this Vikings team to get re-energized. We saw what happened when – McGill Tooling came in here a couple of weeks ago. It was the home crowd that got them back into it. Right. So they definitely believe and think that they belong here in 7A Region 1. It's All right, Davidson's up 22 points. We're going to come back with halftime. We'll have some bands. We'll have some Chick-fil-A. Plus, we're going to talk to Paula Reese from Parent Connect. Halftime's headed your way. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week.
parents aren't involved in school, they get more of this and less of this. When parents are involved in school, you get more of this and less of this. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. Hello, I'm Jordan Clark, and I'm in the Health Service Academy at John L. LaFleur Magnet High School. My future career is to be an obstetrician gynecologist. With this academy, I'm learning firsthand from people already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job really makes me want to study hard and work harder towards my career goal. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. Visit mcpss.com. It's halftime here at Viking Land. Davidson on top, 22 to nothing over MGM. And it's time for halftime action. The band is down on the field. But joining us right now, down on the field, we're going to do a little interview with Paula Reese from Parent Connect, but she also serves as a parenting specialist for the Mobile County Public School System. Miss Reese, welcome to the ball game. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Thank you all for having me. Good, good. So talk to me about what does a parenting specialist do here with the Mobile County Public School System? As a parenting specialist, I work through the Division of Federal Programs through the Office of Homeschool Community Involvement. And we work with all of our Title I schools, those schools who receive federal funds, to su supplement their school-wide program. So we support parental involvement, community involvement, and work with families to help their students uh, to do better in school. Okay, so tell me this, how can parents get more involved uh, with the school than with this parenting program? So every school has its own local school parent advisory committee. We have a district parent advisory committee. And one thing about it, Al, we need parents to be involved, volunteering in school, coming out, reading to the students, just being a part of the school day. And actually, you're a volunteer when you are aware of what's going on in your child's school. Okay, so tell me this, Paula. How can parents volunteer to help kids succeed? What, who do they need to get in contact with? Do they go to the school? Do they reach out to you? How can they make that happen? So you, you start with your local school, and you make sure that you begin with the principal's office, the uh, local school parent advisory committee. They will be able to point you in the right direction as to what the needs of the school are, and especially with volunteers in the school. Also, just being that person sometimes who speaks in great favor of your child, school because we want everyone to know what a great school system we have here. Uh, we absolutely do have the great, great school system. I'm going to say the best school system in the state. So speaking of that, Ms. Reed, how long have you been involved, I guess, as the parenting specialist for the school system or even volunteering or helping out parents here uh, through the Parent Connect and uh, Parenting Specialist Program? I have been with federal programs. This is actually my 14th year, Al, and I've met some great parents along the way. And the thing about parents, the more they know, the more more they want to be engaged and involved because we also have found out and there's a lot of data to support the more a parent is involved in their child's education the more successful their child will be. Now I get to say your name a lot during the football games you and your colleague Carmen Bounds with Parent Connect you just said you've been involved 14 years tell me talk to me about Parent Connect how long has that been going on and, and what's the show about what what can people expect when Parent Connect comes on? But this is we're going into our second year uh, maybe two and a half years with Parent Connect, and our shows are about information for parents and information that parents want to know. We bring in guests who can speak to concerns that parents have and just to keep our parents informed as to what's going on and what they should know about their child's education. All right, Paula, we appreciate you stopping by. Before you go, lastly, tell folks how they can get in contact with you or what's the best possible way they could support the school system through the Parenting Specialist Program. First and foremost, parents, know what's going on in your child's school. Make sure that you are aware of your school website. Um, 
take a look at any information that comes home because you need to know when those parent meetings are going on. Every school has at least, if not a quarterly parent meeting, some schools do monthly parent meetings. So check, read, visit the websites, um, visit mcpss.com, click on the For Parents tab, and also you can reach us in federal programs at 221-5218. All right, Paul Larice from Parent, Parent Connect, and also she's the parenting specialist here with the Mobile County Public the school system. We appreciate you stopping by with that valuable information. We're going to come back. More halftime is headed your way. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Ashley Rich, District Attorney. Today I want to talk to you about a program that we at the District Attorney's Office has with the Mobile County Public School Systems to help with the bullying issues that are going on in today's world because of social media and because our young people think it's okay to bully others. It's not okay to bully others. Bullying is repeated verbal and physical abuse, ongoing verbal and physical abuse. We at the Mobile County District Attorney's Office want to help the community, we want to help the public school system, and we want to stop bullying within our community. It's really, really important that we do so. And parents need to be responsible if their child is either being bullied or if their child is a bully. Parents need to be involved to stop the bullying or to help the child if they are being bullied. And we at the Mobile County District Attorney's Office and the Mobile County Public School System are also here to help. It is halftime here in Viking land. We're in the city of Sims, Alabama. Davidson on top, 22 to nothing over MGM. Corey joins me back here atop the press box of S, is it EG or SS Grider Memorial Field here? <laughs> uh, out here in Sims. Corey, first half, interesting first half. Got somewhat of a slow start, but then things started to un develop and really unravel quickly. Unfortunately for MGM, it started to unravel. Yeah, it's a situation to where Davidson was able to capitalize off of the turnovers, and it was the quick strike ability because you you really saw the Vikings start to unravel after the fourth down fake punt went awry. Right. And as soon as it was called as a loss of down and illegal touching, since then the Vikings really haven't been able to compose themselves and find a way to bounce back and play the next play because unfortunately you saw the Davidson Warriors, Tim Johnson, throw a touchdown pass that was called back due to holding. And then on the very next play, it looked like right. a carbon copy without the yellow flag coming out. And the Davidson Warriors were able to have a 56-yard touchdown strike instead of a 51-yard touchdown strike. And that situation has proved to be pivotal for the Davidson Warriors because now leading 22-0, to they're a team that's predicated upon running the football, not right. a lot of passing, which will kill the clock. Now the Davidson Warriors are in a comfort zone to where they can sweep left, sweep right, get the big push, run over left guard, right tackle, and let this big offensive line take over here in the second half is what I expect to happen for the Davidson Warriors. And let's talk about one of your impact players for Davidson. Not very often do we have a special teams player listed as an impact player, but clearly our viewers have to see the importance of what Joe Montano brings to Davidson, his his preciseness with his punts, his preciseness with his kicks, and look at him pinning MGM at their two-yard line, and the next play, it ends up in a safety. Yeah, he's a situation to where on the kickoffs, you've seen him have those pooch kicks or those sky kicks, yeah. and that's by design. And you have to be a specialist in order to control that football and get it to go exactly where you want it. And because of it, they've been kicking away from the dynamic returner for the Vikings, that's right. Nick Poe, and that's a good strategy by the special teams of the Davidson Warriors. And also a strategy that's being utilized by the Davidson Warriors are the precision punts, like you just mentioned, yeah. pinning them deep in his own territory that's critical also. All right, there's your first half recap right there from Corey and myself. It is now time for the Chick-fil-A halftime, halftime trivia challenge. Let's go into the sands. Kimberly Dunn had someone trying to be our right, next big winner. We are here winner. with our Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge, and I have someone very special that's going to do it with me. Her name is Hannah Saranthus. How are you doing tonight? Good. Good. Are you enjoying the football game? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Well, do you think you're going to be able to answer our question tonight? I 
think so. Okay. Here's the question. It says, which scientist is well known for discovering gravity? Okay. And it's multiple choice, so it should be pretty easy. Let's see. There's Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, or Thomas Edison. What do you think? Albert Einstein? No, not Albert Einstein. Try one more time. Isaac Newton? Yes, Isaac Newton. Great job. And you're in the third grade and you knew that? Yeah, great job. Well, you get this awesome prize pack, and it has stuff from Chick-fil-A in it and a really cool cup and some cool sunglasses. You won't need those right now, but maybe tomorrow morning you'll need them. Maybe. Yeah, I need them. Yes. Well, are you, I'm so proud of you. Good job. All right. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. Hannah did a great job there. Another winner with the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Don't move, we're gonna be back with more halftime action. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. In Mobile County Public Schools, we're all redefining ready. We are graduating college ready, career ready, and life ready. We are more than just a test score. We are earning college credit while in high school. We are working internships to get real world experience. We are welders. We are certified nursing assistants. We are Redefining Ready. Do you have what it takes to be an Envision graduate? We are pioneering students to be all they can be. From sixth grade all the way to 12th grade. I definitely would recommend Envision to other students who feel the way I feel. They really work with you and they've gotten tutors and you have online teachers to talk to. It starts right here. It starts right now. Envision Virtual Academy. Enroll today. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. It's halftime here for the MCPSS High School football game of the week. Second half action will be headed your way shortly. Right now, we want to share some information with you. Are you thinking about you're ready for a possible career change or looking to make a change in a young person's life? Well, the Mobile County Public Schools is looking for you. There are currently several openings for teachers to fill classroom vacancies. Nowadays, there are multiple pathways making it easier than ever to become a teacher. Whether you have a calling or a desire to teach, there is room for you within the Mobile County Public Schools. Now, we would like to introduce you to a few teachers who like to share their story. The reason why I started teaching was because I knew that I wanted to inspire children. And at a very early age as a child, I knew that teaching was my calling. The reason I chose Mobile County was because this is my home not to mention that E.R. Dixon was also my home place to start my education as a child. So I wanted to give back to my community. As far as being a new teacher in Mobile County, um, I know especially here at E.R. Dixon, you will get professional development, you'll have a mentor, and you'll have plenty of people that you can lean on. Administration, coaches, math and reading coaches, intervention teachers that will all help you and you'll be working as a team to make sure that children are successful. I received professional development. I also had a mentor when I started teaching. In addition, I had my grade level, so I could ask plenty of questions to all the time, <laughs> whether it be over the weekend or first thing in the morning. Um, I definitely think that we as Mobile County do a wonderful job of providing the support that you need as a new teacher, professional development, whether it be co-workers, mentors, you have a team all the time to help you and guide you through teaching. It makes you feel like you have your place, you have your home. And here I'm already at home. But just to know that when you come here, you have a second family. I'm excited to be a part of Mobile County 
every morning when I wake up. I'm so excited to get to school. And the most important thing is just to see my children and laugh with them and know that we're not just helping that child learn Common Core or Wonders or whatever the program is that we're following, but helping them to grow as an individual. Because these kids are going to be, whether they're here in Mobile County or in another state, we want them to be true examples of leaders and successful and responsible citizens. And when people say, where did you go to school? Mobile County. Ladies and gentlemen, I came from a family of educators. My mom, my sisters, my aunts. Um, I have a lot of family members in education. And it was always something that they came home and talked about. So I've always had a desire to do the same thing. Uh, I have always wanted to teach. More importantly, I was an athlete and I wanted to coach. So that kind of put the nail on the head as far as, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to go work with young people, especially adolescents. I knew um, high school was the level that I really wanted to work with. With me being from out of town uh, or out of state, Louisiana, coming into Mobile County, and I always felt at home. I feel like all the people in Baker and in Mobile County in general, the Human Resource Department, the whole transition coming in here was very warm and welcoming. Um, I immediately felt like I was part of the family. I wasn't an, you know, an out-of-towner because a lot of people who graduate within Mobile County come back and work within Mobile County. So it was very comforting for me to know that someone that did not go to school here could come in, you know, with open arms and um, transition very easily. I would definitely recommend Mobile County to those about to graduate in education. Um, we have a very warm family atmosphere. We all work together. Uh, one of the things that I love about Mobile County that I didn't get in my last school system is the um, cooperative teaching that we do. So you never feel like you're doing it alone. Um, we team up with other teachers that are teaching the same subject area and we plan together, we work together, we brainstorm together. And so, you know, you, you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, it's, a, it's truly a team effort. And those are those stories about those teachers. We hope that you join as well. Let's take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn is with MGM coach Stan McCain. Coach McCain, what was the atmosphere like in the locker room during halftime? Well, we were just trying to figure out what uh, what it took to get back in this ball game. I mean, we're no, no hollering, screaming, yelling. And we're just trying to figure out how we can get back in this game. So what specifically does your team need to improve on in order to pull off the win tonight? Well, we just got to be more physical at the point of attack. They, they whipped us on the line of scrimmage, and we've made some mistakes. Uh, we just need to get a little momentum on our side and, um, and see what we can do. Yeah. So what did you say to your team to motivate them in order to ex execute the rest of this game? Well, I really didn't say anything to them, to be honest with you. I was waiting until they got, got through warming up to say what I need to say. The coaches did a great job of uh, taking care of that. All right. Well, good luck to you, Coach. I'll let you get with your team. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Coach Stan McCain said, look, I don't have much to say. They get with their coaches. They know what they need to do, Gore. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's a situation to where there's no need to peel the paint off the locker room walls. Yeah, you want to yeah. go ahead and stay positive and let your guys know it's obvious what they did wrong and what they can correct. And it's up to the Vikings to do that at this point in time. You take a look at my checklist, Al, and it's going to be very evident that the things that were pointed out earlier at the broadcast – have come to a situation for the Vikings. They yeah. needed to limit Davidson's explosive plays. And what did Coach mean by that? That was plays over 20 yards. Well, the Warriors were able to have a 49-yard touchdown run, a 56-yard touchdown pass, so they're not doing a good job of limiting those explosive plays. They have to value the football and not have a lot of turnovers. Well, so far, at the end of the first quarter, we saw them with two turnovers that led to Davidson Warriors points. And they have to play with extreme energy and intensity the entire game, what Coach McCain just spoke on. Right. And that's something that you don't want to come out of this locker room flat. You have 24 minutes worth of football left, plenty of time to make the corrections. On the other hand, for the Davidson Warriors, 
Coach Smith talked about it, avoiding those Davidson drive killers. You can't be at first and 15, first and 20. We saw them at third down and 16 score a 56-yard touchdown pass. So they've been able to overcome when they do shoot themselves in the foot. Finding field position, Joe Montano pinned them deep, the Vikings that is, deep in their own territory at the two-yard line. And because of it, you turned around and saw a safety that was able to be gotten by Alex Dowles right. of the Davidson Warriors because of that tremendous field position that Joe Montana afforded the Davidson Warriors and pinned the Vikings deep. They also put in work at the Warrior line of scrimmage. That's obvious they've been able to do that because Colby Blunt is busting big runs, and that's important for the Warrior offense here to continue to do in the second half. You're right about that, Corey. Very important because Coach Sean Smith, he wants to keep things going. He wants to keep that momentum going for them. Also, MGM, they have to get things together. They're down 22 nothing. It's homecoming. You can see the excitement in the air at halftime. They were naming the homecoming king and queen as well. But you know what? In the second half, Davidson is going to receive the kickoff. Corey, they, de they declined in the first half, so they're going to get the ball right back right now. Yeah, it's a situation again. Davidson's strength is definitely running the football. They yeah. want to control the line of scrimmage here in the second half. The Vikings are going to have to get in the trenches and get that push. Find a way to create a turnover. Find a way to get this Viking and Sims crowd behind them and to create a lot of excitement in the stands because if they're able to create that big hit, big turnover, over some type of big positive play, they'll be happy about it. MGM and Davidson have played each other 36 times. Davidson leads the series 20 to 10 so far. So you know what? It's a big, big, big contest tonight. We know region play is very important. Pretty much uh, next three out of four games for Davidson will be region games for them. And now you talked about it. This is a game where you're trying to jockey for playoff position. The Vikings are 0-7 all time in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. I got to thank our, thanks to our folks over there at Future Ones. Corey, they're getting us taken care of tonight. We have on the purple polos and in commemoration and bringing awareness for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Future Ones, they can take care of you, whether it's a polo, whether whether it's a football equipment, baseball equipment. I know they can do it all, Corey. Full game day apparel. Not only do they have the practice jerseys, we have full athletic apparel available future ones www.futureones.com wear the future oh yeah our purple polos tonight in commemoration of domestic violence awareness for the month of october so we appreciate you for giving us support and also making you aware of domestic violence in the month of october a little short kick right there for the vikings and one of the up guys for davidson is going to take it gets it up to about the I believe the 39 yard line so very fortuitous situation for the Warriors right there. Jersey Mike subs, authentic subs since 1956. Corey, I'm going to put it like this. When I go to Jersey Mike's, I'm always asking for Mike's way. I want to get the juice on there, man. You got to have it. A sub above is Jersey Mike's. Three locations, a fourth one soon to come. You have the Dolphin Street location. You also have the Airport Boulevard, a location in Malbus, right. and one soon to come in Saraland. Mark and Christina Sinclair own the Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's, thanks for taking care of our crew, a sub above. I believe, what, did you stop by the airport location I tonight? I did today. I yeah. sure did. All right, first and ten for the Warriors. Ball sitting at their own 47-yard line. Colby Blunt with his first carry of the second quarter. And we have our first flag, I'm sorry, third quarter, and our first flag of the third quarter as well. And that's something you want to avoid if you're the Davidson Warriors. You want that clock to continue to run. And because of the flag, you have a personal foul that's going to be called against the Davidson Warriors. Flag on the play. Cost them close to 15 yards oh, yeah. on the personal, personal foul. foul. Illegal foul. hands to the it's face Davidson. on the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty and first down. Not a great way to start the second half, so that puts you in the hole. It'll be first and 25 right now for the Warriors. We just finished talking about not shooting yourselves in the foot down and distance-wise is something that Coach Smith really emphasized to his team. His offense, it functions better on first and 10, excuse me, second and short, third and short, not at first and 25. Fake the pitch to Blunt. I'm sorry, fake the handoff to Blunt, and they give it to Portlock. He's got some room. Getting close back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe about two yards short, and Portlock looks like he's a, a bit hurt there, Corey. 
and it's something that the Davidson Warriors want to stay away from. It's over on the far sidelines, out of bounds, so he's able to get up and limp off and will be attended to by the trainers. Now it looks like a situation to where you're going to have about second down and probably about 16 yards to go. So he didn't get all of it back, but a good run by Portlock there. Davidson comes out second and long, as you just talked about. Johnson decides to keep it, doesn't pitch it to Blunt. And that looks like that's going to be a no gain there to take Davidson to third down. And that first down, down and distance situation creates an opportunity now to where you don't want to have to throw the football because this Warrior offense is predicated upon staying ahead of the chains at second down and short or third and short. Now you're at third down and 14 yards to go. If you have an incompletion, it does stop the clock and plays into the favor of the Vikings. Johnson airing it out. And that ball incomplete, cannot get it out to Hamilton. So that will take Davis in the fourth down. Not a good series for them starting off the second half, Corey. No, it wasn't. It, it started off wrong with the personal or the hands to the face situation. Now, Joe Montana, the specialist kicker for the Warriors is gonna have opportunity to kick and it's going to be interesting to see here back deep for the Vikings is Nick Poe and C.J. Wallace. C.J. Wallace and Nick Poe both are explosive returners. You get a clean and you get a shield and a little bit of blocking. They turn that corner. They can make something and give the excitement to the crowd that's needed. And they're giving Montana respect. They're lining up at their 15-yard line. So they want to have enough room in front of them. So the ball squibs out of bounds at about the 30, 31 yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn has some uh, player injury updates. What's, what do you have there, Kim? Yes, number 15 Switzer for the Viking football team. He actually, right before halftime, I saw him on crutches leaving the stadium with his parents. I believe that they were on the way to go get that knee officially checked out because he was just in so much pain. They had it wrapped up, a brace on him, as well as ice on top of it. And the parents, as well as the player, looked a little bit discouraged because he wanted to finish out this football game. But unfortunately, tonight we'll not be able to. Thank you, Kimberly. Appreciate that. Switzer is a junior. I know he's disappointed homecoming night as well, Corey. But I did see Zach Lewis, the linebacker you talked about. He was running sprints toward the end of the uh, first half. So we may get a look back at him in the uh, second half here. A little quick toss to Williams, Corey. And it looks like the, the, the handoff not quite there once again for Harwell. And Josh Martin's going to get the carry for the Vikings. And it's a situation to where now the Vikings, Al, as you just mentioned, it was not a clean toss or a clean handoff. We've seen a lot of that. And because of it, it messes up the timing of the blocking of the running back. And if you don't get that clean exchange, it makes a difference. So our first look at Josh Martin coming into the game tonight. Thought that was Williams there. Martin, number 27, lined up next to Harwell. He faked a jet sweep to Nick Poe. Got the little bubble screen and nice, nice pickup there for the Vikings. And that's going to be a first down and a lot for them. Great pass there to Jarius Green. And they're close to the midfield stripe, Corey. Yeah, and that's the longest pass completion of the night for the MGM Vikings. And that's the shot in the arm that you need. That boost of confidence. You were able to get the Warriors to punt the football, and now you're able to move the sticks, right. which is great. And that's exactly the type of confidence that you want to see exuded by this Viking offense. High snap, but we do have flags on the play. Look like it may, may have possibly been some movement on the line there. <laughs> Dead ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, replay first down. So that will push the Vikings back five yards, first and 15 here in the third quarter, their first time touching the ball. And one of the things that's interesting about this Davidson Warrior team, they're 68-2 when allowing 10 points or less all time since 2000. That's a very impressive record. Wow, Martin on the care right there getting back to the original line of scrimmage and picking up a couple more. So it'll take the Vikings to second down and long. He gets that five yards back, so that's a good look for them. So second and long here for the Vikings. Number 14, 
Ball is about the 49 yard line. Jason Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the winning ticket for Split the Pot. Again, the winning number for Split the Pot. 3 8, 9 1. Coming up soon, we're going to put out the Game of the Week Brain Buster question for you, Corey, and the rest of our viewers. We'll put that out there coming up shortly, so make sure you stick around for that. The Game of the Week Brain Buster, and wow, a Brain Buster up the middle. The Warriors all over Martin, and they drag him down for a significant loss back to about the 39-yard line. Kept those legs churning and was not tackled by the initial defender. Took a tag team effort to get him down, but Charles Caver, the 5'4", 130-pound junior, was ultimately able to get him down. You look at the handoff to Martin. Ooh. Again, immediately the defense is on top. Cedric Johnson pushes him back, and Caver is able to come in and finish off the tackle. Going to bring up third down and about 18 yards to go now for the Vikings. Wow. Great timing on the tease there from my executive producer, Quentin Howard. Putting the brain bust out there, and Davidson busted that play <laughs> wide open. Third and long here for the Vikings, not where they want to be. They had some positive momentum. Harwell's jersey almost ripped off, looking like Dan Marino out there scrambling, and he drops the ball, unfortunately. And that's a live ball, Corey. I think I see the beanbag yeah, and the officials marking that as a fumble. Another turnover for the Vikings. Harwell was not able to secure it. The Warriors were able to jump and pounce on top of it. And really, they were trying to scoop and score in that situation. You look at the replay, Harwell feels the pressure. He was able to avoid the initial defender, and that initial defender was Demetrius Johnson. But then the Warriors were able to pounce on top of the football. You had Reginald Davis, the second be able to pop on top of the football, and the Warriors were able to force another Vikings turnover. You can see Stan McCain talking to the young man right there, calming him down, keeping him in the moment, showing him the importance. Tim Johnson, he's airing this one out, does have a receiver in the end zone, trying to get, get that ball out to Hamilton. That would have been their second time connecting, but overthrows him, so second down for Davidson. Yeah, it's a situation to where we saw in that same exact corner they had a lot of luck early or late in the second quarter, rather. And, again, you take that big shot as the offensive coordinator on first down. The offensive coordinator is Ken Boatman. And the Vikings defense has to be extremely tired. Even though they just came back from halftime, they've just been on the field way too much. Blunt splits out. A little quick pass to him goes nowhere. Corey, you talk about the importance of MGM, MGM trying to stay consistent and get things together. Listen to this. The last time MGM won two games in a row was in 2016. They defeated Murphy and Bryant. That's pretty amazing. Almost three years you haven't won back-to-back -back games. They got the game against Citronelle last week, homecoming tonight. Everyone in Viking land excited. Not where they want to be, down 22 points right now. And let's remember, one year ago, this team was 0-10. Right. 0-10, did not win, win a game. And you have their head coach, Stan McCain, being the defensive coordinator on that team that did go 0-10. And they were able to find a way to get that win early in the season. And because of it, now the Viking program is being reinvigorated. All right, Corey, we got a break right here. Injured player down for Davidson on the field. So we'll do our game of the week brain buster. Time for you to put on your thinking cap. MGM has made the playoffs seven times. What was unique about each appearance? MGM has made the playoffs seven times. What was unique about each appearance? Stick around. We'll give you the answer of the game of the week brain buster later on. 6.30 remaining here in the third quarter. See if we can get a... Name and number right there, number 62. That's the center, Sam Walker. He's a senior. Training staff looking at him right now on the field. And his backup in the game, they may switch over Jamal Dozier. Jamal Dozier was the starting right tackle, right. the 5'8", 222-pound senior. Is listed as the backup to Sam Walker, so they'll be doing some reshuffling. 68, Jalen Colley now may move to right tackle if the depth chart is accurate. Yeah, that's right, and very important when you get a new center, the center quarterback exchange, very important that you keep that consistency going because Walker's pretty much been handling things all night here. But if Jamal Dozier, number 60, does become the center, he's a young man with a lot of experience on this offensive line. So yeah, the Warriors coming out in Dozier, yeah, it looks like he's going to move over to the center slot there. 
So it'll be third and long here for Davidson as we resume play. Hand off to Kobe Blunt up the middle. Corey, you saw him pick his hole, and he just dashes right into it. Nice run from Blunt. He's short of the first down, but nice run there. I tell you, Kobe has 20-20 vision. As we take a look at this replay, it was a good exchange to Dozier, to Johnson. Blunt immediately decides to cut it upfield, knew exactly where he wanted to go. Yep. And now you're looking at fourth down and five yards to go from right at the 20-yard line, so that would be a 37-yard field goal. Kick is up for Montano. He's got a little draw on it. I believe it's above the goalpost, but it is good. So a 37-yarder for Joe Montano at the 547 mark. And Davidson extends their lead 25-0 over MGM. And that's the specialist that Joe Montano is. That's, again, Al, we were shocked when he missed the extra point oh, yeah. to begin this game as Davidson scored their first touchdown. And we were a little bit shocked that he didn't attempt an earlier field goal. They were down at the 19-yard line and had an opportunity to kick a 36-yarder and elected to go for it. It was a turnover on downs. Montano, that kick proved to be true. Let's take a look at the Alabama Sports Writers Association top 10 poll here, 7A. And as we thought, Theodore creeps into the top 10. Big win last week for them. So uh, Theodore right there, 4-1. and one. Fairhope picking up some, some votes as well. Six, six votes there. McGill Tulin sitting right at number 6, dropping down, I believe, a spot from last week as well. So uh, there's your look at your 7A top 10 poll for week six. Let's flip it over, try to get the 6A poll up if we have time. Spanish Fort and Sarah Land, wow, notched up there. We know Spanish Fort and Sarah Land both undefeated in the region. St. Paul's as well, the big game tonight in 6A. St. Paul's and Spanish Fort playing each other. St. Paul's creeps into the top 10 court at 5A champs last year. They're making a statement this year in 6A. They may not be there long because right now Spanish Fort leads the St. Paul Saints 17 to zero in the third quarter. All right, see if we can try to get the 5A poll right quick before this kickoff from Montana. We, if you haven't heard the news around the Mobile County area, Viger number one, first time in 10 years, getting the number one ranking, five and zero, oh, and they are putting it on the floor right now. Citronelle, they picked up some votes, 10 votes. Faith Academy has one in Jackson as well. They lost to Baker last week, but the big news around here in 5A, Viger atop the 5A poll. Little short kick. Once again from Montano, this side, this time he decides to work the right side of the field. And there's a 5A pole again sitting right there. Tala, I'm sorry, Briarwood Christ, Christian lost yeah, last yeah, week, yeah, so yeah, Viger moves on up to the number one ranking. Let's try to get over to the 4A pole right quick if we have a little time. UMS Wright, big game tonight. Those two going head to head. UMS Wright and Hillcrest Evergreen, two local schools here. Andalusian and Williamson playing tonight. Look at Eric Corey. Andalusian gets nine votes, and Williamson has four votes as well. So very competitive, 4A, 5A, 6A, and 7A for Mobile County Public Schools. UMS Wright up 38-0 to zero over Hillcrest, and it's a battle in Andalusia as the Bulldogs lead Williamson 10-6 to six in the fourth quarter. Battle right there for Josh Martin trying to get some yards, and those Warriors are denying him. Maybe he'll get one yard. I think that's the home field advantage. Shot of Nick Thank Zach God Switzer the right side. there. Looks like he'll not be returning as well. Unfortunate for the young man, Corey has to go out right there, especially on homecoming night. Yeah, he had a big catch and had a big first down for the Vikings on the play in which he did injure his knee, so we just want to wish him the best. Second and long here for the Vikings. Trying to get some positivity. Martin flushes out to the side. They're going to come back. That ball is tipped. That's a live ball, but it's incomplete oh, now. The Warriors scrambling all around it, trying to scalp it up and take it to the end zone. Yeah, that would have been a straw that broke the camel's back if they're able to get a pick six in that situation off of the tip pass. And now you're looking at something that's going to not be good for the Vikings, a third down and nine, as this Warrior pressure has been ratched up a little bit. Behind the sticks, not good for the Vikings right now. Trying to pick up a critical first down, as I just talked about, try to get some positivity. 
Get the crowd back into it. A little jet sweep to Nick Poe. Hasn't called his name very much. And there's a reason why, Corey, he is brought down and tackled way behind the line of scrimmage. That takes MGM to fourth down. Cedric Johnson, the defensive end, 5'10", 192-pound junior. Very active tonight as Kelly Eubanks is utilizing his 3-4 defense. And Cedric Johnson is able to make sure that he sets the edge. Uh, he's doing a great job of getting up the field and making sure that nobody turns the corner on him. Great homework by defensive uh, coordinator Kelly Eubanks for Davidson. They have pretty much shut Poe down tonight, Corey. Done an outstanding job of getting after the Vikings on offense and so far have been excited to hold them to a goose egg on the scoreboard. Colby Bunt setting up at the 35-yard line to receive the punt, but we have flags on the play. Referee Tim Dees will give us the call here. Dead ball, delay a game on a kicking team, five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. So that pushed the Vikings back five yards, but it's no word. That'll just give uh, Duke a little more, stretch that leg out a little more, core and lay into that punt there. That's all. Yeah, it's a situation to where if the Warriors are able to set up the return, Blunt has gotten away from a couple of these punts, so he wouldn't have to take the punishment. But if he's able to field this cleanly and gets past that first wave, watch out. Nice punt by Ethan Duke. Very beautiful punt. Colby Blunt retrieves it and goes nowhere. Brought down right about at the 44 or 45 yard line. Make sure you join Homeroom with Renee Phillips and find out the latest homework tips and what's happening inside the schools and classrooms. It's Homeroom with Renee Phillips right here on the MCPSS TV network. So Davis is going to take over here at the 346 mark, Corey. Their last series didn't bode very well for them. They're going to come out right now up top, sorry, 25 to nothing. I'm sorry. Actually, Montano got the field goal. I was thinking about the previous series where they didn't go anywhere. But right now, clearly on top, 25 to nothing over MGM. And they're going to feed this ball to Whitfield there on that carry. He picks up maybe five right at the midfield strike. Seth Dunn, the 5'9", 162-pound senior outside linebacker with the stop on the play for the Vikings, but not before it picks up five yards for the Davidson Warriors. And again, they are going to be content to run the football here to end the third quarter and to start the fourth quarter because leading 25-0, to the clock is their friend, and you want the clock to it continue is. to tick. And how do you do that? By staying in bounds and continue to run hard and get a almost a free first down off of this penalty. And you can see the Vikings kind of saying, oh, my goodness, we did it, possibly an offsides. Dead ball encroachment yep. on the defense. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Takes ball to the first you can see defensive down. lineman Bernard Jenkins just kind of upset with himself encroaching across the line. So that'll give Davidson a free five yards. First down moves the ball to the 45. The good thing about that, that the clock still runs if you're the Davidson Warriors. No need to hurry. You can take as much time off the play clock and the game clock as you would like without getting that penalty flag. Corey, if you hadn't gotten here early, you would have not known it was homecoming. This crowd has been silenced for a long time tonight. Little pass across the field. From Johnson, gets that out to Kyle Graham. We talked about that play earlier where Graham dropped one. He didn't want to get tackled there, but he brings that one in. He picks up about three or four yards. You look at the replay, and Johnson does a good job rolling to his right, finding his wide receiver. Graham picks up his fifth reception of the season. We talked about Kobe Blunt so much tonight coming into this ball game at six touchdowns, has extended that to eight touchdowns, over 700 yards coming into this ball game. This young man is a dynamic runner for them, and he's on the sideline getting the break right now as they hand it off to Whitfield. Jonathan Whitfield tackled for a loss, maybe no gain. That'll take Davis in the third down. Paul Lewis, the 6'1", 190-pound. Inside linebacker does a good job making sure that the Warriors lose yards on second down. Going to bring up third down and nine now from the Vikings 44 yard line. Approaching 90 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Tim Johnson fakes the handoff, gets the quick out to Hamilton. He's trying to work back on that little screen 
and it goes nowhere. So that is fourth down, and Davidson will have to punt. So MGM will get the ball back here. Yeah, and that's a big stop right now by the Vikings, going to bring up fourth down. And again, you have Joe Montano, who's an outstanding kicker. And because his ability to kind of place this football inside the red zone area, he, he, that's a bonus. Yeah. And again, you're trying to waste as much time off of the clock. Ten seconds now remaining on the play clock with one minute remaining on the game clock. And Montano, he puts toe to leather. He's going to pin the Vikings deep. Montano lays into that one, gets to the far side. Look at that backspin, Corey. Wow, like he's up there on the number eight green at Spring Hill. Great punt by Montano, and it puts MGM at about the 16, maybe 17-yard line. Wow, way to flip the field there. And that's exactly what you want your specialist to do, have the ability to flip the field because the Vikings have really struggled here in the third quarter trying to produce anything offensively. We've seen a fumble, we've seen a bad snap, and we've seen the Warriors be able to capitalize and put more points on the board. 37.6 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. The Vikings are going to have to drive the length of the field in order to get any points on the board. Harwell and Martin in the backfield there. Man in motion, Nick Poe, they fake it to him. Harwell has some room, but the hole shuts down immediately, and he takes a loss there, Corey. If he could have just kept going north and south, he would have picked up maybe four or five. Yeah, that pocket collapsed very quickly Late flag. on Harwell, and Nolan Asbury makes the stop for the Warriors. Late flag, I think we had a little extracurriculars after the play that might penalize the Warriors there. Dead ball, personal foul. Oh, opposite against MGM, whoa, so that will push them back further toward the goal line. That's something that you just can ill afford mm. trailing 25 to zero. I think, Corey, it's like you say, maybe the retaliation got the flag because I saw the Davidson guys coming out like maybe they thought they had caused the penalty there, but it goes Dead against ball, MGM. Personal foul on the offense, second down, play second down. So it will be second and long here for MGM as they're pushing this ball back to about the eight, nine yard line. We'll call the eight and a half right here. Wow. So the Vikings do not have to snap this ball, Corey. 15 seconds remain on the play clock and the game clock down to six seconds. So I think Harwell is possibly going to let this one run out. And there it is. That will be the end of the third quarter. So smart move by the senior right there. Get the free time out here. Come over to the sidelines, discuss some things with Coach Stan McCain. Yeah, trailing 25 to zero. The Vikings, again, just looking for that one play that will excite this home team here in Sims, Alabama. Now you only have 12 minutes remaining to prove yourselves. You had 24 coming out of the half right. and weren't able to capitalize. Davidson was able to kick the big field goal by Joe Montano to get our scoring going in the third quarter. But now it's a situation where Josh Martin or somebody, Harwell, Post, somebody has to find a way to light a fuse for this Viking team. All right, Coral, let's see if we can light the fuse in your brain with those neurons and dendrites and axons. The game of the week, Brain Buster, we put the question out there. MGM has made the playoffs seven times. What was unique about each appearance? What would you like to say your guess is? Well, I know they've lost all seven. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know if you would necessarily call that unique. You're close, Corey. They've lost all seven, but the unique feature is this. This. They've lost in the first round each time. And they last made the playoffs in 2002. So, Corey, you were halfway there. I, I give you a little extra credit. You were halfway there. And it's a situation to where, again, this community is so hungry they are. for this team. Even at 0-10, the stands were full last year when That's we right. looked at the Battle of West Mobile. They just came out to Baker High School and, and really supported their Viking program. And it's evident as the tailgating and the full cr homecoming crowd that's here tonight at MGM. So it's second and long here for the Vikings. 
backed up to their own nine yard line as we start the fourth quarter. Harwell looking to air it out, and he's pushing it way down the field. Shows off his dynamic arm there, but it's past the outreach hands of Poe and also Jerry and Wilson, so it'll take MGM to third down. Yeah, you have to take your shot right there. Hopefully maybe you get a pass interference call that yeah. will move the sticks, but you want to give your receiver an opportunity to be able to run under that football and kind of overthrow him by about six or seven yards, but that's probably because of the pocket pressure that the Warriors have been able to give Harwell tonight because he hasn't been able to stand in the pocket and stay clean and have a big pocket presence to stay comfortable throwing the football. Third and long once again here for the Vikings. Martin in the backfield with Harwell. They go with the quick little tunnel screen there and up the middle. They do get the ball out and connect with Jarius Green, but that's way, way short of the first down. So we'll get to see Mr. Ethan Duke once again with punting duties. Yeah, high completion percentage. You look great pass on the tunnel screen, and you have a situation to where at least the Vikings were able to give their punter a little bit of breathing room, Ethan Duke in the back of the end zone. So Duke's setting up, Corey, you're right, he's close, maybe about the two-yard line, doesn't want to touch that back end line there. So hopefully the Vikings will get off a good snap and a clean delivery. There it is. Nice punt by Duke. Colby Bunt back to receive, and he stays away. Senior's very smart. Just let the Vikings down it at the 39-yard line. Down to the 39-yard line of Davidson. They take over first and 10. All right, Davidson's going to take over right now. Next week, we're headed back down to Bobcat country. This is going to be a big one, Corey. McGill, Tulin, and Theodore. We go live at 6.55 Friday, October 12th. That is going to be a huge region game. McGill Tulin was all over the Foley Lions tonight, and I know that Theodore was leading Murphy also right. at the half. So you're looking at a one versus two seeding situation. That's right. I think the Yellow Jackets come in, probably have won maybe 30 region games in a row. The Bobcats looking to put it into that next week. So join us next week down in Theodore. That is going to be an exciting game. Johnson pulls that ball out of the pocket. Look at him, Corey. He's running, running past his injured player down on the field, just stepped right over him. That's and Dozier. I believe that's the backup center there, Corey. That's Dozier. He's screaming that he has knee problems. Oh, goodness. And, and you, hate to, you hate it for that young man because, again, right. you just mentioned he came in, moved over from his right tackle position over to the center situation for Sam Walker but immediately grabbed his knee, and Tim Johnson had to sidestep him. So hopefully Jamal Dozier yeah. will be able to get up and put a little bit of weight on that leg because that's a young man at 5'8", 222 pounds, senior. You want to see him be able to get up and walk it off, but he's definitely in pain Yeah, Dozier, his knee. And Dozier was down early before that play really developed. Uh, you couldn't even see him in the highlight. He was already down, Corey. So Johnson maneuvers and steps right over him. So hopefully they can get him taken care of. We're going to take a break and come back with more action. This is the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It's a fact. Bullying happens. Bullying can lead to serious physical and emotional pain. But there are some things you can do to prevent or stop it. Stand up for the person who's being bullied. Let the bully know that it's not cool to pick on others. Take action by reporting the bully to a teacher or principal. In the end, when you help someone who's being bullied, you are also helping yourself. October is Parent and Family Engagement Month, and Mobile County Public Schools is sending out an invitation to you. Join us Monday, October 15th at your child's school, and you can pick up report cards as you meet and greet your child's teacher. There will also be parenting workshops to provide resources and materials for students' success. Because when families, communities, and schools work together, students succeed. So mark your calendar October 15th for our Parent and Family Engagement Day. 
The Environmental Studies Center is a natural sciences education facility designed to provide unique learning experiences. In addition, wildlife rehabilitation plays a vital role each day at the center, featuring more than 500 acres of rich woodlands. The center affords teachers, students, and the general public an opportunity to experience firsthand the natural environment. Environmental Studies Center. It starts with us in the Mobile County Public Schools. Mobile County Public School Signature Academies allow students and parents school choice that prepares students for a career. The academy is for students in 10th through 12th grade. Choosing a high school can be overwhelming for parents and students, which is why you should attend the Signature Academy Showcase, October 16th from 4.30 till 6.30 p.m. At the Mitchell Center, parents and students will have an opportunity to ask questions and speak to representatives from various departments and learn more about the Signature Academies. For info, go to mcpss.com. To find out what's happening in Mobile County Public Schools, from school news to weather alerts, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our website, MCPSS The Wire. I'm Al Whedon, joined by Corley Bounty. On the sidelines is Kimberly Dunn. You can see the young man being carted off right there to the sidelines, Corey Jamal Dozier. Looks like a possible leg injury there. He is able to put a little, little weight on it, but so unfortunate, as you mentioned, coming over from the right tackle position to back up the center. Sam Walker, who went out, so Coach Sean Smith will have to dig deep into the depth chart to get us a new center. Yeah, back up to a backup, and that sometimes in this situation is very, very tough, but you bring in a, a young man who's going to come in, and it's just a reshuffling of the offensive line as it's going to be Bennett Vaughn It's going to get the call now to be the new center for the Warriors. Nice snap by Vaughn up the middle with that ball. Goes Colby Blunt, picks up a couple of yards. But that is going to be maybe, maybe two or three yards. Second, uh, maybe one yard there. Second and long here for the Warriors. Play picks up yards, second down nine. So Davidson clearly just taking their time. Corey, the clock is their ally and their friend yeah. up 25 points here. Unfortunate that the Warriors losing players here in the second half. Running a little tempo, got to move it quick. Play clock down to two seconds. And Sean Smith calls a timeout. He doesn't want to take a five-yard penalty. Yeah, he wants them to run the play clock down to timeout the least Davidson. amount of time possible. But you have to break the huddle with less than five seconds left to go also, especially with the new center. Knowing what the snap count is, you want to make sure that everybody's on the same page with 944 remaining here to go in the fourth quarter. That timeout was a well issued and well-advised timeout by Sean Smith because, again, sure was. the worst thing that can happen is you have some type of fumble on the center to quarterback exchange. Let's take it down to the sidelines. What's the latest with Kimberly Dunn? Hey, guys, as you know, I've been here on these Viking sidelines for um, – the majority of the game and so I wanted to give you a little bit of feel of what it's been like over here so you know we've been trying to get these guys pepped up excited they should be excited it's their homecoming game but unfortunately they don't seem to have that momentum that they need to have in order to execute properly in this game and we've seen that result in the way they've been playing on the field so hopefully they're able to within this last quarter get some more momentum and at least get some points on the board because you don't want to have a complete blowout for your homecoming game these coaches are trying to pep up their team now these players just need to catch a little bit of that fire. Yeah, you're right about that. They definitely need to get the pep going. You don't want to have an over, over especially for homecoming, not a blowout that night, Corey. And there's a flag on the play that's mm. going to negate that play even occurring, and that's something you definitely don't want to have yeah, as a penalty yeah, you coming out of a timeout. We saw it early with MGM as they broke the huddle and I mean, broke the, came out of a timeout, broke the huddle and got a penalty. Ball, and same thing ball, here. False start for offense. Replay second down. Down. Just a little excitement. Plus the excitement, you can see Colby Blunt, Corey, he was upset. He couldn't break that run the way he wanted to. He was like, no, I want to keep going. So uh, he heads over to the sideline to catch a breather. It'll be second and long here, probably by second and 14 for the Warriors. Well, if the Warriors are able to break containment, whether it's Colby Blunt or the running back Jonathan Whitfield, and it looks like at this point in time, either back, if they break containment and get beyond the line of scrimmage, they're in good shape. Whitfield on the run right there, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage as you see scores coming in tonight. A couple back. finals have already been reported. Third down Way here for Davidson. Like 52. Third and long for the Warriors. 
as they're trying to pick up the first down. Yeah, that final 13 to 6, the Williamson Andalusia game is a heartbreaker for the Williamson Lions and Viger all over the floor, 46 to 0. Theodore 47, Murphy 0 there. Wow. Fairhope gets the win over Baker 27 to 19. As you can see, play clock approaching 10 seconds, and Davison, no rush, no need to hurry here. Just as long as you get it off and don't incur that five yard penalty. And as I say that, Corey. There's the delay of game penalty. And, you know, again, coming out of a timeout or a penalty, that's just frustrating because it's up to your quarterback to get your team lined up, regardless of whether you have a new center or a new tackle or a new guard. Right. You still need to get your team lined up. You need to get the play in. And that's on the quarterback, Tim Johnson, to get his team and know where the play clock and the game clock are at all times. So third and long here for the Warriors. Double stack at the bottom and the top. Johnson by himself, Corey, he's, he has room. Can he get the first down? And he takes the slide. Johnson Very smart for the young man. Right. Keeps the clock going. Slides It'll down be down fourth three, down. Three, three, two, but the nine. game clock right under eight minutes, so no big thing for Davidson right there. They're kind of in no man's land. They could go for it or they could bring on Montano. Coach Sean Smith decides to bring on the young, the all-state punter there. Marquavis Quinney is who made them slide on that play, and that was smart by Tim Johnson. If you don't take, have to take a hit, don't. I mean, you can just ask the San Francisco 49ers quarterback, Garoppolo, yeah. how important it is to step out of bounds or not take the hit. So it looks like MGM's going to somewhat bring the house. No one back to receive the punt. Mont Montano just kind of kicks the end over end. He keeps this one inbound, smart of him. So Davison's going to mark that ball at the nine-yard line. We talked about the brain buster. What was unique about MGM making the playoffs? They've lost in the first round each time. Ironically, the past two years, Davison has made the playoffs, but they've been knocked out by Auburn the past two years in the first round. So Davison trying to get back to the playoffs for the third year in a row and doing a, doing a pretty good job tonight over MGM, up 25 to nothing here in the fourth quarter as we have possibly a quarterback change. Looks like we're going to have a new quarterback tonight, Max Pardon. He's a junior. He's coming in. He's going to get some reps here, Corey. And I think he's only attempted two passes on the season. But, again, senior Lucas Harwell has had enough and is going to be Man, on the sidelines there. encouraging Max Pardon and that the rest of this like Viking offense. Josh Martin still in the ball game right there as well. William Nunn runs to the sideline. About the and line. it'll take MGM to second down. Eight. Maybe about two yards on that carry from Martin. So second and eight here for the Vikings. Hand off to Martin up the middle. He tries to go. And he keeps the legs going, but now the pile is pushing him back. As we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast, score a beautiful night for football here out in Sims. Perfect weather, just unfortunate, not the outcome that the Viking faithful wanted. They have been quiet the majority of the night. Yeah, trailing 25 to zero with 6-10 remaining here in the fourth quarter. You have to have that sense of urgency because running the football is not going to get it done. You, you're going to have to find a way to go deep or find some crossing routes to where you're picking up maybe 12 to 15 yards per pop. Now they're going to go trips right, which allows the quarterback, Max Parton, to have an opportunity to throw the football. They're going with the screen there, and he's trying to connect with none and cannot get it out to him. And that will take the Vikings to fourth down, and once again we'll be seeing Ethan Duke coming on to punt, I'd be surprised That's if Sean Smith even down. allows Colby Blunt to come out on the field anymore tonight, Corey. Yeah, I agree. And Blunt running out, but they're motioning. No, no, no. Get back, son. Get back, get back. So no need to put him in any harm's way. And, and the Warriors now kind of playing chess match. They don't even put anyone back for the punt. They're just kind of playing a little center field action right here. Yeah, they just want to make sure that the Vikings don't do anything tricky like they did earlier. 
And not a very good punt from Duke right there, Corey. That ball is going to be downed at about the 30-yard line. So he didn't exactly shank it. I can't really describe what happened. It had a lot of spin to it. It just went straight up in the air and straight back down. Yeah, you look at Jason Williams from Davidson, ran over the top of the football. You don't want to get anywhere near that football. You right. want to hear fire, fire, and get as far away from it as possible. So I know the coaching staff is not going to be too happy because that football can take some funny bounces. When you're trying to run over the top of it, it hits the end and it makes a bounce and touches you. Now all of a sudden it becomes a live ball. So that's why you want to make sure you stay away from it. But the Warriors are in excellent field position at the Vikings 30-yard line with 528 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Speaking of that, Corey, pretty much you can say this game is pretty much in the hands of Davis, and they pretty much secured and lock it up. Who would you consider or probably put into the nomination rank for your pigskin player of the game tonight? It's going to be a couple of guys that we can consider. I mean, Colby Blunt can definitely be one of them. Joe Montano was critical in his field position. Uh, and getting that taken care of. Right. So <clears throat> you have three guys that you can choose from. Dennis Hamilton had a big reception on a big touchdown, but I think Joe Montano has been a difference maker in flipping the field so far. All right. So we'll check back in with you in a minute or two and give some contemplation, see what you come up with there. First down Enjoy for the Warriors. Game. They run it a couple well, yards. Well, on the for Mary Montgomery. Looks like we've had a quarterback change for the Warriors as well. Jaden Jordan, he's a junior. He's coming in and handling quarterbacking duties right now. So Davison looking toward the future here as they're going to get their young man some reps, Corey. And Jaden Jordan also plays wide receiver. You look at him, he's 7 for 31 for 67 yards on the season. Has thrown a touchdown and one interception. So let's see if the Warriors decide to keep it on the ground here to continue yep. to ground and pound. Jonathan Whitfield with the run. Nice run, and he's staying in bounds. Look at the smarts by the young man. No need of going out of bounds. Just keep that thing in bounds and keep that clock moving. Jonathan Whitfield, a sophomore, so he's getting some early reps in, in the game here. Nice stiff arm by Whitfield, yeah. bouncing to the outside. Very, very smart intellect right there, staying in bounds, keeping the clock running. But you look at his vision in the hole. He really did hit it quick, fast, in a hurry, making the first defender miss and then punishing the second one with a stiff arm. So the chain gang will move. Looked like they had a little confusion on the sideline over there for the officials. So I think Coach Sean Smith is going to call a timeout right here. Maybe some miscommunication was going on with the young quarterback. So he's going to discuss some things and kind of get it in order and get things back situated. Yeah, 4.15 remaining here in the fourth quarter with the Warriors now having a fresh set of downs at their 20-yard line of the Vikings. Don't forget, we're going down to Theodore next week. This is going to be a big one, Corey. Number one against number two. 7-8 Region 1 is pretty tight as McGill Tulin undefeated, Theodore undefeated. This will be a big contest right here. So next Friday, join us live at 6.55. We're headed back down to Bobcat Country with Coach Eric Collier and the Bobcats. And they're looking to stay undefeated in region play. That is going to be a big one right there between McGill and Theodore. So I cannot wait till next Friday. Make sure you hang out with us. McGill won 44 to 0 over Foley. Theodore won 47 to 0 over Murphy. Right. So you have two teams that are high scoring, dynamic offensively. Something's got to give next week. So one versus two. Who wants to be the region champion next week? Hand off to Whitfield. He takes it up the middle for a couple yards and looked like Sean Smith has brought Tim Johnson back into the ball game, Corey. And also, it looks like the backup center, Jamal Dozier, is back on the field as well. Good That's guy. something that you really are happy to see, that Jamal Dozier is back on the field. That right. just goes to speak on this young man's toughness. I know a year ago as a junior, he was a Crichton Optimist Club Offensive Lineman of the Week award winner, and he's back out there for the Davidson Warriors pulling for his team. Second and long here for the Warriors. All right, Corey, we're approaching three minutes. You kind of put three names in there. Colby Blunt, Joe Montano, Dennis Hamilton. Who do you want to go with for your pigskin player of the game tonight? I have to go with Joe Montano. 
I think kicking that field goal was huge, pinning them down deep into the Vikings' own territory was big. He's the controlled the way the kickoffs have gone. Right. He did miss the one extra point, but again, I, I think that all things said and done, when you have that type of specialist in high school who's able to control the game with his foot, it makes a difference. Joe Montano, number six for the Davidson Warriors. Corey LeBounty awarding him as pigskin player of the game, Joe Montano, yeah, number Jay six. Andy you know what, I think he's a good right player. Side. He also runs track for the uh, for the Warriors, also plays soccer as well. And his favorite subject is math, Corey. He says he finds it interesting how the numbers intersect. Yeah, and Joe Montano, took his team to the 7A boys yeah, state championship the soccer game, game a year ago. And right. I think they were runner-ups uh, losing the state championship game. But making history for the Davidson Warriors was Joe Montano. And he's a young man that came to media day and handled himself uh, very, very well. And Back also is a good academic Back student and has started Davidson. picking up a lot of recruiting interest here as of late. Okay. Wake Forest, FSU, and some other wow. schools scored a high ACT. I want to say he might have even made a 34, 35 okay. on his ACT. So he's just the epitome of what a student athlete is all about. Oh, yeah, yeah, very smart kid. Very good kid as well. So pig skin player of the game, Joe Montano, number six Dead there. ball, personal foul on the offense, 15-yard penalty, fourth down, fourth down. So that will push the – Warriors back. I know MGM down 25 to nothing. Had a chance to talk to Coach Stan McCain earlier in the season, Corey, and, and he was very excited about being the name the head coach out here. And uh, one thing he talked about is uh, Whitfield on the move there, just barreling up the up the field. Not enough for the first time. First down. He talked about but the consistency right. that has not right been chance. in place at MGM. If you know us. They're on their seventh head coach since Scott Leslie left in 2009. So when he was asked yeah, about, time, you know, why take time, the job, what's going on, time. he said he's not in it for the money. He's already getting a check from Mississippi. In 10 years, he'll probably get another one. So he's not planning on going anywhere unless they tell me to go. So he says the one thing these kids need is hey, consistency in the David coaching, here. and he's dedicated to doing that. And I think, as he said, Holy. I'm here for the long haul. On the offense, the replay fourth down, 10-yard penalty. Has created a lot of excitement in this Sims yeah, community. Yeah, sure has. Again, 0-10 a year ago, Al. And, yes, you know, down. when you're 0-10, it's demoralizing. But it gives your kids an opportunity in the offseason, in the spring, in the summer to work a little bit harder. Yeah. Gives them an opportunity to try to take that away. And as seniors, you knew this senior group did not want to go 0 and 10 again. They wanted to come in and prove themselves. And they've been able to do that. And they're able to do that in a different demeanor with Coach Stan McCain. So Coach Sean Smith trying to get an explanation of exactly what's happening here. And he gets it. And it is going to be fourth down, so they have to get this one over to MGM. But a timeout now, officials timeout, as Tim Dees wants to discuss things further with some of his uh, officials here. Good shot of the Davidson Warriors there. The young ladies in their Incredibles outfit there, Corey. Part of the Warriors band. And a pretty good contention from Davidson came over for this game, too. Yeah, I mean, the Warriors have plenty to be happy about also, and they're going to put more time on the game clock. Now, ah, that's what it is. Okay. I, I was wondering, be, I thought we were like at a minute something remaining, and now look up, it's 225. Yeah, that's a situation that they were asking the officials to adjust, and the officials got that right. Now they're going to wind the clock, and it will be fourth down and close to 46 yards to go. And we have yet to see the Warriors come out on the field. Maybe they'll take a delay a game here to get some more yardage if need be, but quite interesting, Coach Sean Smith keeping his kids over on the sideline there, Corey. Yeah, he is going to take that delay a game penalty, and that'll be a situation now to where it will be fourth down and 41 yards to go. And maybe that was an opportunity. He wanted to talk to the kids over there, kind of get things together. Yeah, you don't see too many fourth down and 41s. No, you don't. But when you have a kicker like Joe Montano, you don't have to worry about 
fourth down and 41 <laughs> because where the yard sticks and the chains are right at the 15-yard line, he'll be able to kick that ball probably to them. And he just punches that one. Look at the roll, Corey. They could possibly down this ball within the five yard line and with at the four. Wow. And Coach Smith talked about it when I spoke with him earlier this week about how demoralizing it can be for an opponent to when they think they're going to have some momentum to now start off at their own five yard line and have to go 95 yards to try to score versus being set up on a short field. And when you have a punter like Joe Montano or a specialist like Joe Montano, you don't have to worry about that. And Montano has done it all night course. I think that I think that is the wise choice right there for you. Pig skin player of the game. Not very often we have a special teams player as the impact player, and not very often we're gonna have one as the player of the game as well. So up the middle, the Vikings go, picking up a couple of yards there. It's looking like to be their last possession of the ball game. Number Definitely have to give support and shout out to the community who it's came out here. tonight, showed great support for the Vikings. Thanks it was homecoming, and, and, and typically, you know, this stadium is full anyway, Shady Corey. Man. They're very excited, but even it was extra full tonight for homecoming, but just not the outcome the Vikings could deliver for their fan faithful here in Sims. Slung to the ground. Right Takes MGM to third down. Takes ball out to the 13. And MGM will have enough time to third run one more two, play. Ball, right. Before this game becomes final. Play clock around 15 seconds. And as you can see, the game clock right there. So it looks like we'll get this snap plus possibly maybe one more depending on where the play ends up. Hand off to William Nunn. We've called his name a few times tonight, early in the game and here late in the ball game. The 16 yard line. And I think that's enough for the first down. Well, so that will move the sticks, Corey. And we'll have seven. one more snap here for MGM before we call this one a wrap. Our halftime score was 22 to zero. So the Vikings can hang their hat on. They only gave up three points right. this last 24 minutes. That's right. And you're always looking going into that bye week, which is what the Vikings will have next week, to, to have something positive to look at. Yeah, I did talk to Coach Smith before the game, and I said, how important is it to get that bye week? And he said, we, you know, we, we, we yeah, had it, and very important game. that we have it, and uh, we need to get the rest Davidson, as well. So that's going to wrap it up. Davidson, 25 to nothing is the score tonight. Davison all over MGM Corey. I had my papers ready to write down more action, but you're right, it was only one field goal in the second half. Yeah, in 24 minutes of football, we had a Joe Montano field goal, and that was all the yeah. scoring that was done here in the second half. But the Warriors found a way to capitalize off of turnovers, and that's something that the Vikings really could not afford to do tonight is to turn the ball over, especially given this explosive offense an opportunity to score. We saw Tim Johnson get his first throwing touchdown right, tonight, right, which right. is positive because the Warriors really have all been about Colby Blunt and his running ability, but they that's showed true. tonight that on film, you better watch out for the pass play ability also. And we also saw Johnson miss the tight end a couple times across the middle. We even saw him air it out very deep a couple times, but the key that the offensive coordinator stayed with him. They had the play called back because of a penalty against Davidson. And the next play, they went right back to it. And Johnson aired it out to Hamilton to pick up that touchdown. So let me ask you right quick before Kimberly gets with uh, Coach Sean Smith and possibly Joe Montana. If you're Coach Stan McCain, what do you talk to your Vikings about after this ball You're going game? into a bye week, Al. So you're saying, hey, guys, we have – some improvement to do. We haven't played our best football, but when we put four quarters together, everybody has to be on the same page and do what it takes as a team to yeah. get back on that winning streak because they don't like the taste of 0-10, and, and I guarantee they don't like the taste of what they're feeling tonight and didn't like the taste of that McGill game. Right. So to get back on track, I guarantee in two weeks you'll see a new invigorated MGM team. And speaking of that, 
Davidson catches fire because they lost their first game, one, two, lost two, took a bye, and now the second half of the season, they started off, remember, their next three out of four games are region games. They played Lee Montgomery. They've played McGill already. They've played Fairhope already, but guess who they have waiting? The Theodore Bobcats score. Yeah, and that's a big matchup also because, again, Davidson's trying to prove that just because you have McGill at one, that two, you also have an opportunity to compete for the region also. All right, let's take it down to Kimberly Dunn. She has Sean Smith and Joe Montano. All right, I'm here with Coach Smith and our Pigskin Player of the Week, Joe Montano, right? Is that right? All right. So, Coach, how do you feel about the way your team performed tonight overall? Um, four, four quarters. That's what we talked about before the game. We talked about it um, with the players. We talked about it at the half, and, and I think we kind of did it tonight, and the score reflects that. Yeah. So what does it mean to you to kind of be chosen as the Player of the Week, and how do you think your performance played into being chosen for that? Uh, well, I mean, it's the first time I've been chosen as Player of the Week. <laughs> and uh, I, I think I, it's, it's just my part to, in special teams to get us good field position and get us those three points when we need them. Yeah. And uh, it's, it feels nice to be chosen as Player of the Week, but I'm just doing my job. Yeah, so Coach, how do you feel about him being chosen? Um, I mean, he's, he's a weapon, you know. Um, he's been big throughout the season. Um, field goal tonight was big. Um, and then the, he did a great job on kickoff. He placed it right where we wanted and punting the ball. I mean, he's going to have some great, great numbers. He did a, overall a great night, great night. Yeah, that's some great things from your coach. So, Coach, what did this game teach you and prepare you for for next week's game? Um, I mean, it gives you something certainly to build on. Um, you know, we're three and two in the region now, so, you know, still in the hunt. And we'll just come back on Monday and see if we can't get a little bit better. All right, well, congratulations on the win. I hope you all have a great night. Thank you, Kimberly, down there with the Pigskin Player of the Game and winning coach Sean Smith, Corey. L listen to what he said about Mant Montano and what he talked about, the positioning of where he kicked the ball. Yeah, I mean, that's when you know you have a specialist, when you're able to control the football and make it do what you want it to do. Yeah. Coach Smith talked about it. You don't find that many specialists in high school football. Well, when you do have one, you utilize them, and that's what they were able to do. All right, don't forget, next week we go live at 655. We're taking it down to Theodore. It will be Theodore and McGill. That's going to be a big one, number one against number two for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. So for Corey Bounty, Kimberly Dunn, Quentin Howard, our executive producer, and the entire MCPSS TV crew. I'm Al Whedon. Thank you for joining us tonight. Next week, we're taking it to Theodore. Have yourself a great night.